to another episode of Between Nerds. This is episode 106. 106. We're almost done with this season. I, again, my name is Aldo Mendez. This is my co-host, Drew Elias. What's up, man? Hi, guys. Drew Philip Elias here. Here to ruin your childhood for like the 20th time. It should be this one. Maybe more. Anyways, mm -hmm. and this is Jonathan Joestar Elias popping her head out of the table. Um, at the beginning of this episode, we do want to go over some housekeeping notes. Uh, we have no entries currently for the month of August. So if you want to enter our giveaway and get some cool handpicked nerd shit, you like, I don't know, Digimon will get you Digimon. We like Pokemon, we'll get you Pokemon. Mm. But um, what you have to do is you have to leave a five-star written review on Apple Podcasts and then email us at betweennerdspodcasts at gmail.com. Letting us know that that five-star written review is you because we can't verify who wrote what reviews on Apple Podcasts yeah. or... Or, this one is probably a lot easier for a lot of people. If you're a subscriber on YouTube and your subscriptions are made public so that we can verify you're a subscriber and you comment on a video during the month of August, then you will also be entered into the giveaway. Again, um, the comments are there. The email is at betweenerspodcast at gmail.com. Just comment whatever you guys think. Give us suggestions. Uh, give us your thoughts. Uh, our Mashuko Tensei blew up with comments. I feel like that's our most trafficked. Uh, 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 comment section right now. Right, right, right. You know, but please leave your comments, leave your thoughts. If you guys fucking hate this channel, let us know. So we don't, so we don't give a shit about I, your you, shitty comments. Like, like it's funny because you're talking about the the Mishiko Tensei one has like the most comments, but that one has the most dislikes. Yeah, which, which is like hilarious because we only have what two dislikes on that video. It's like two or three, like, uh -huh. but still, like that's two or three more than everything. Say else. something. Don't just click that. <laughs> Say something, <laughs> pussy. Anyways, uh, we received our our fifty sub plaque. From <laughs> so thank you guys. I didn't even know you were drawing this. This is hilarious. Yeah, it's between fifty subs. Let's get Th to thanks, 100K. guys. Honestly, though, like, I, I think we are happy with how the YouTube's going. Like, we have a, a lot of videos. A lot of them, it's just, like, the old, like, audio clips. Uh -huh. But um, we've maybe been taking YouTube more seriously for, what, like, 20, 25 more episodes? We have 50 videos on, in there, but, like, most half of them are just audio. Right. But, yeah. like, so that's, like, 20 of, like, the actual, like, mm -hmm. good... Well, good, better, better, better you, you, YouTube videos where, like, we have an actual, like set and uh -huh. we're we're actually in front of the camera i was looking it, at the videos when we were at my place when we had like oh, the bad. yeah i mean we're just recording this is crazy. but honestly i i tell people this all the time i was talking to some of my friends that i play Yu Gi Oh with they were asking me about the podcast what's his name can i watch it on youtube like they got all got a little bit more excited once i started telling them that we were on youtube and stuff like that right mm -hmm. but then um they were like oh are are all your videos on there if i go on youtube can i listen to all your audio videos to all the audio episodes, and um, I had to tell them no, but I was also inclined to be like, I kind of don't want to put older audio episodes on YouTube because they're so bad. You know what I mean? Like, they're so cringe. They're so, like, even now, like, it, hopefully this is still going on in a year or two, and I can yeah, look back on this episode yeah. and be like, this, this is cringe. Shit. Yeah, this is but awesome. like, God, I cannot, I just cannot watch or listen to like any old episodes it's so uh -huh. bad just like we can't watch old ass anime anymore uh god damn it uh uh is that it with our with our uh, uh housekeeping notes sure Th uh, please follow us on uh instagram facebook we have a facebook now i know a lot of angry nerds are on facebook so you guys comment on there we're putting we're putting short clips of our videos uh in there but we also leave the 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 link to youtube so please go to youtube uh, again, like or subscribe on YouTube again. Uh, what else? I think that's about it. Uh, yeah, ev just everything. Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, at Between Nerds, uh, Facebook, uh, Between Nerds Facebook page. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. mm, that's it. That's it. Um, so if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, again, you can email us at BetweenNerdsPodcast at gmail.com. If you have any recommendations, don't get me wrong. Me and Aldo have been talking a lot about, like, how We've been talking a little bit about, like, <laughs> trying to subsidize, like, bunk-ass anime with, like, we need wiggle room. We, I, I can't hate doing this, so I can't have too many bad animes stuck together. Yeah. Which, before we were prioritizing, like, uh, a lot of uh, social media recommendations or, like, if a guest wanted to come by. But... I, I, get, I get it, though. Like, we're all adults. We all got shit going on. Like, sometimes people got to drop out of the schedule. 
And but now I'm really out here talking about fucking Digimon Adventure 1999. You know what I mean? Like, and, and if you remember last uh, April Madness, which was supposed to be March Madness, right before, right before April started, we saw a one bad anime leaving that. We went into that month already with a one bad anime. Our spirits and, were high because like yeah. February was no bad anime. Yeah. And then March, we just wanted to watch whatever we wanted to watch, so we watched a bunch of hitters. Mm -hmm. okay. I think, but I think the last one was a duck kanga. Was it? I yeah, because we went into April Madness, okay, like, and with two consecutively like bad sport. What anime. were they? Uh, the swimming one, free, yes, free, and the the badminton one, the the ice skating one. Uh, the one with, that we didn't finish. Yeah, the one that we didn't finish. Uh, <laughs> might be the only time, like, halfway through a week we've, like, switched Switch to plans. something. Else. But anyways, Digimon, uh, 2000 and what, Jerome? 1999. 1999. 1999. Uh, Randy Savage did some of the dub work in some of the Digimons. Did he? Yeah. I, I, why? I don't know. That's he was the, Randy Savage. The thing about Digimon Adventure 1999 is at least the American dub, which, like, that's how I remember watching as a kid. I'd seen all these episodes before. It's been like 20 fucking years, so don't get me wrong. Like, I forgot I'd, wa no, I'd watched a lot of this. Um, my last year as an undergrad, which is already fuck, like seven years ago, in 2015, I watched all of Digimon, I think that's Tamers, season three, whichever one season three is, where like they're in real world Shibuya and they're using like cards to True. mod their Digimon. I watched all of that like fairly recently. Mm -hmm. And I had really high hopes for this for this week. It was Roby's idea, and uh, Roby had to drop out again. Like, I get it. You've got stuff going on. But, like, now me and Older are really here talking about Digimon Adventure 1999. And we had a terrible week. It was, like... Yeah, it was, I did. It was so bad. Like, um, I, I, I've been maybe a full week or at least a half week ahead of our watch schedule. Because I've been sorting and listing a lot online for, like, my, my Yu-Gi-Oh! product, right? Just because, I don't know, I've just been putting it off for months, and I finally found some time. So, in the background, like, when I'm in this room just sorting product or, like, doing orders and putting stuff online, I'm just watching anime, what we're watching during the week, which is why I've been watching things so quickly lately. And, like, even passively, because I've already watched most of these anime, watching Digimon Adventure 1999, I wanted to turn it off. I genuinely was like, this is making what's already a chore that much worse. Like, and this, is, this isn't even entertainment right and, now. And the episodes are so short. I could sit here and tell you that Digimon could have been a 12-episode series, like, at least, like, the first season. Mm -hmm. uh, but it could have been a zero-episode series. This could not be made at all whatsoever. Uh, it starts off... And you know what? The animation, the character design is not that bad. It's not that bad. It's, it's iconic that bad. almost. It's because, iconic. Because again, it's super 90s. It's like goggles on the head, like yeah. weird helmets. Big hats. Big hats, yeah. gloves, like colored Glo hair. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of Mickey Mouse gloves. A lot of Mickey Mouse gloves. Like, yeah. it, it, it's neat. And like, Helmets. I think, I think a lot, even a lot of the characters I don't hate. I like Izzy a lot. I remember thinking very fondly of Ty and like, in Ty and Matt's dynamic. Because especially as a kid, you're like, how, me and you were like, Six, five, six when this came out? Seven, maybe. Seven, maybe? Like, you, you, you know what I mean? You see... You, God. It, it like, by like, the time we watched it, we were seven. Because we got it in America, so that means probably a year later. I think it was 98 90. in Japan. So 98? I, oh, okay. It, it's 99 like, oh, in the okay. States. Oh, okay, in the U.S.? Okay. But, like, it's... um. There was this feeling I used to have as a kid where, like, you would look up or, like, older characters, you would want to... Happiness. I, no, no, no. As, <laughs> with older characters, like, I can't wait to be that age kind mm -hmm. of feeling. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, So if I'm six, seven years old watching Digimon Adventure 1999 and all these characters are, like, 11, 12, it's only, like, three, four years. Me and you right now would be like, they're basically just fucking kids. That shit don't matter. Yeah. But, like, me at that age of, like, oh, being 11, 12 looks so cool. You get to go on adventures. Yeah. It, I it, a digi... That did you device? Right, device? right. Or like, it, it's like when you were like in high school, oh, I can't wait. Like you're watching like a college TV show or you're watching Revenge of the Nerds. Oh, college looks so fun. College mm -hmm. looks so cool. I can't wait to be an adult. Go do this. Go do that. Yeah. And, and, and like, I almost miss like, that, like being able to look forward to something. <laughs> <laughs> but now it's just like, so I felt really fondly yeah. around, yeah. around this. Like I was excited with Roby to yeah. watch it this week. Now you just look forward to your prostate exam. Yeah, <laughs> I can't wait to, 
<laughs> to be clear, I'm a prostate cancer. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't even know anymore. Like, at 29, like, I don't even know what I'm supposed to be excited about. Uh, but it... Man, and one of the things that I gripe about about a lot of the anime that we watch, even even though it's good anime, it's about making these kids look old mm-hmm. and look very responsible and in the real world. Oh, but, yeah. The, but, these kids are like 11, yeah. and they're out here just like without parents, without anybody, just just fighting monsters. But, like, the character design makes them seem a little bit older. Like, if you were to tell me, if you weren't to mention to me that these kids were, like, in high school or some shit like that, in most of the anime that we watch, yeah, like I would just see it as oh, just grown ups doing grown up shit, right? You know, right. But here, Digimon in all places is missing that to help the story mm-hmm. because not only are there young fucking eight, twelve years old, um, the, I, it, 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 the the character design and it's good character design, but the character design it's so perfectly child that in, in, for you to revisit it as a grown-up with bills and, like, shit, you know, that you have to worry about, uh, it seems like, oh, shit, I'm just looking after my... You know, you're babysitting watching this fucking show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. They are 11. Yeah, 11. Yeah. Uh, I think the youngest one is, like, 9 or 8 or something. Yeah, TK's, like, like, 8 or 9. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and and, and, and if, if they would make the... the the character design more like adult looking, like Bleach or something like that. Shut the fuck up! You hate Bleach. I know I hate Bleach, but I'm not saying I hate <laughs> everything about Bleach. You you know what always makes me sad? What's up? Like I I I I I can't wait for us to sell out because like imagine somebody paid us to be like just talk shit every week about what you're currently watching. Like it would give us an excuse to watch like uh, just gaslighting, uh, ma- ma- just made in abyss. Because things that are coming out weekly, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Or, like, like there's no way right now we could go into every week for an entire season, which is, like, 12, 13 weeks, and talk about everything. Like, the the, the new Yuri anime that's out. The, 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 the or not Yuri. What, what's the term for, like, lesbian anime? Yeah. The, the one with, the, with yeah. those two lesbian girls that are, like, shooting everybody, like, that's, like, number one on all the top anime yeah, charts. Yeah, yeah. Maiden Abyss is out right now. Uh, Call of the Night is out right now. But, like, we would have to wait for each of these to end. And then we can go back and be like, oh, do you want to talk about Maiden Abyss Season 2? Which, like, I can almost guarantee we're going to do, like, the second it ends. Mm-hmm. But, like, we couldn't do that right now. And especially, like, having, like, a fluid schedule, it's it's it would be, like, impossible to do that. Because, like, we just have weekends that we just can't record sometimes. Mm-hmm. And and uh, what you were talking about earlier about subsidizing this, this like, pre-2008 fucking animes... Uh, we, I mean, between us, it's always, and it will, I believe it will always be like a, you know, all watch, you know, type of anime podcast. Uh, and we are going to watch those things, but we might space them out. We do have 52 weeks in every year. Which is almost like not enough. Like, to be honest, it's not enough. enough. It's not enough. enough. They're 10. Holy shit, they're 10. Ten seasons? No, no, no. They're ten years old. Oh, they're ten they're years old. Fifth and sixth graders. Yeah, and they could have at least made them. Holy uh, shit! They were fifth graders. They, they could have at least made them like, like Midoriya, Bakugo kind of age at the beginning of My Hero Academia, but fourteen. Yeah, like no, they how they look. Oh, That's okay, what I'm saying, okay. The character design. Honestly, um, I see a lot of like modern, like anime character design that I do in Digimon Adventure 19, 1999. Like, all these characters could basically be my hero characters, mm-hmm. if you're being completely honest. Absolutely. Which Absolutely. is which is cool. It's like a compliment. Like, Midoriya mm-hmm. could be, like, a mix of, like, Matt, Izzy, and Ty. Like, if you're being... Yeah, completely, just the character design alone. And then, like, the... Uh, what is it? Matt? The, the guy with the... That looks like Bakugo? Matt, yeah, yeah, yeah. Matt is Bakugo, the 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 blue hair guy is the blue hair guy from Joe, uh-huh. is it Joe and Digimon. Oh, oh yeah, he yeah. Can yeah. be this fucking guy. Mimi can be the Gravity Girl. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Eureka, Eureka. God, yeah. it's been so long. Honestly, and I do read uh, My Hero every week. It's just like even the, this most recent chapter the one that released today we're recording on oh, august 21st you're probably mm-hmm. listening to this episode earliest the 23rd um the 
Like, all they did was buckle down that Bakugo's really dead. We were on a break last... So, two weeks ago when, like, CJ was here, I was bitching nonstop for, like, the nerd down that uh, uh, Horikoshi has basically... The, 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 the well of creativity has run dry. And he's now convinced that he has to just, like, mutilate or kill people to get people interested in his work at this point. Which reminds me a lot of, like, how the Bleach manga originally ended. People were just bored and didn't give a shit anymore. Mm-hmm. And he had just had to start tying stuff up quickly. And um, that chapter, they killed Bakugo just for no reason. Just just, just because. Just, just to get people talking about My Hero Academia. You just killed the most popular character in the manga. And then you're just going to spend two whole chapters just being like, wow, Bakugo's really dead. Wow, let's analyze the body. I don't feel any, any pulse or any... It, it, I don't feel anything on the corpse. He's really dead. His heart has been ripped to shreds. Ah, oh, damn, Baku goes like just whole chapters of that, and I I feel like right now it's going to go either one of two ways, which is kind of funny and sad. Is that he do, he's either going to stay dead, or Baku is going to come back to life by some freak of nature, some power that we don't know about. The, his explosion power is going to restart his heart. Something, 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 and then. That's just to get people re-excited that Baku goes back in the narrative. And yeah. it makes me so, so sad. Just like Digimon Adventure does. And Digimon Adventure, uh, it, I mean, we, we, looked, we looked this up. Uh, the creator of Digimon is also the creator of Tamagotchi. And, um, is it Tamagotchi or Tomogochi? Tamagotchi. Com- com- comment your reasoning. Comment down below. Say what you think. Don't, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Yes. Uh, like I was saying, and, and you can tell this anime is a really drag on session of playing with your Tamagotchi. Oh my god. <laughs> because, <laughs> because you get your Tamagotchi, you're excited. Oh, it's a little baby. Oh, look at it. I'm it's so fluffy. I'm going to sell a lot of plush animals out of this fucking anime. And and so blatantly, it looks like the anime is just doing that. It just feels like... Selling merch. It just feels like the, 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 the McDonald's gang and the... And the Burger King gang is yeah. trying to sell toys out here. Bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't know, man. You guys have been here with us for, what, 106 episodes? Two two years and some change. You know, like, and it's so upsetting to watch anime like this because, like I said, this could this season, 26 episodes, could have been 12 episodes of the same thing. Yeah. Because it, 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 it right off the bat, it, it's, 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 um, is edging you with with like what is the next like elevation but once that is broken like in the second episode is just repeatedly and you said like five digimon out of time evolutions yeah. so like five minutes of a 15 minute episode is just like i know it feels like 15 episodes but i was timing it out the the intro music is exactly 90 seconds the outro is exactly 15 seconds so it does total out to like 20 something okay it does feel like 15 minute episodes yeah like there's nothing going in and like no sound production there's there's a little bit of sound production but it's always really really bad and like honestly i was gonna comment on Power the music ranger sound I, I was gonna comment on the music a little bit i was like i feel like it's got scary tones like it's not good it's never like more than two instruments mm-hmm. but like it does set a mood like there's certain episodes where they're walking into a haunted church and the ghost Digimon's there. And you feel it a little the bit. The big drums on the back. Yeah, yeah. It tries to set a tone. It yeah. really does. With like a $10 music production budget. Yeah. <laughs> like, I would say less. Like dude. for real. Like a 10 Like you did the most with what you had. So it's the studio's fault. I'm not blaming the music producer. And the but like, studio's... Jesus uh, what is this? Sanon? Sanon? Say, uh, fuck. I don't even know. Is it? It's a blah, 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 is an anime series produced by Toei Animation. Oh, Toei Animation! Wow, Toei Animation! But like, we know Tony Toei Animation's yeah. dog shit. Like, yeah. we're, that means we're talking about Super. We're talking about the the four the four kids rendition of One Piece. That means we're talking about no Toei Toei is doing the current One Piece, isn't it? They are, but they yeah. do both. Like, they, you can oh, blame okay. them for both. Like, oh, oh, okay. They, you okay. can blame them for both. They're good. And they're bad. Like oh, okay. But we recently watched something that is toy animation. Was it 
Violet Evergarden that was toy? No, Violet Evergarden is like Cloverworks or something oh, like that. Oh, okay. Then we watched something recently that we were like, oh shit, toy? I'm, I'm trying to go through their list. It's just they have too many, bro. There's yeah. just so many productions on here. Mm -hmm. uh, I have no idea. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. Sailor yeah. Moon. All the big like 90s anime are toy animation. Okay, it, okay. It, it, it's Digimon, it's Dragon Ball, it's Sailor Moon, it's you, even the the most recent Digimon, it's mm -hmm. all that. And like the episodes, like an episode together probably has like like 200 frames. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like to put, it, to put it technical, like every episode, they're one frame away from like the animation to look like this. And just like super clunky, everyone's doing the robot. Like, might as well be puppets. Like, no, might as well like, like early South Park when yes. they just use like uh, cardboard uh, construction which, which, paper. Which like shout out to South Park. Like they just celebrated twenty five years. Dude, Rush surprised them on the stage. Mm -hmm. Honestly, you know what the most surprising part about that for me was? I'm surprised like the guys from Rush are still alive. Yeah, because like, Neil Peart's dead, right? Yeah. The drummer's dead, yeah. right? Neil Peart's dead? Yeah, it's only the bassist and the singer. But, but like, the singer was, like, the main thing. Like, yeah. you want to talk about Dungeons & Dragons music in the 70s? Like, it's it's Rush, yeah. right? And they're Canadian. Absolutely. Which is, like, even funnier, especially in terms of South Park, because the South Park guys love them so much. Yeah. But South Park also loves shitting, shitting on Canadians. Canadians. Yeah. And something else, like, South Park, whatever your, your mother thinks of this, or <laughs> your boomer uncle thinks of South Park, like... They have made like such a musical impression, like in media, and and, and I didn't even realize like they, how they, much they played like, music all their songs, dude. That's what I'm saying for 17 hours. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. I feel like I didn't even realize like how much music, how much pro it's like that. You forget that like Family Guy has a lot of music when uh -huh. you think about it, and that's one of one. That's one of my problems. He said this in an interview, like well, uh, making, Seth... making it a musical as part of it. Well, Seth MacFarlane is basically like a Broadway nerd. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like he's a high class acting kind of. He's just got this dumbass, easily marketable theater sense kid. of humor. Yeah, he's a theater kid. He's a Broadway <laughs> fucking nerd. Yeah. And, and like, so it makes sense because mm -hmm. even American Dad was like that a lot. Mm -hmm. People forget a lot, a lot. American yeah, Dad a song had about abortion, and a song about <laughs> weed, a song about. But then, like yeah. every season of Big Mouth. Me and Karen forget that there's a really big singing component because mm -hmm. me and Karen love Big Mouth, and we yeah. even watched like the side season, whatever the fuck it was, the one that's only about uh, Marty. Mm -hmm. And um, you forget there's whole songs about penises, whole songs about having Periods. period, yeah. whole songs about like just having weird boners in strange places, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. just it, it. It's just that type of like North American comedy, like. Uh -huh. Animation is dog shit, like always. But... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, God, it's so ugly. Big Mouth is so yeah. ugly to look yeah. at. But that's, like, supposed to be the joke, is that, like, it's just hideous characters at all times. And uh, opposed to all that we've said, Digimon, like, like Drew said, it probably two, three, if anything, instruments playing at the time. Uh, there is a lot of scenes where you could add some robo sounds into it, or you can add, you can, you know, some bushes moving because you're walking through bushes, but it's not there. So like, if they're walking through bushes, all you hear is them like, I, "Oh, I, geez, I understand. I hope there's no poison ivy here." Oh, my mom said to watch out for the tall grass because yeah. I'm asthmatic. Or I'm like, asthmatic. I'm allergic. Oh no, Shut I hope Joe. I hope this cave doesn't break my nail. And then every fucking kid is insufferable at some point. That's what I'm saying. Like <laughs> it's such '90s dog shit. Like when you think like '90s Disney movies, like Hercules and stuff like that, it's just bad fucking one-liners. Like for the whole movie, that's Digimon. But at least that was just one character. And what Pokemon got so good is that one guy can have more than one fucking Digimon. I, I want you to hold this take. Because, like, I'm going to make you watch the original, wow. like, 20 episodes of Pokemon. And you're going to be mad. Like, because don't get me wrong. But, no, I but, but, really... what I'm saying, but what I'm saying, uh, and it's not even, a, like, this this take is not even attached to nostalgia of, of how good I you're think saying, Pokemon you, was. What you like about Pokemon is they switch out different Pokemon. Like, exactly. he's, he's got Charizard, exactly. he's got Squirtle, he's got Bulbasaur, he's exactly. got Pikachu. And my point was going to be that here on Digimon, you have seven fucking kids with seven fucking annoying Digimons. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, dog. And... 
not only that, you you had a great idea of giving character development and personalities to other Digimon that are not part of like our main group. Oh, that shit's tight. Like that villains shit's get super... redemption arcs. Like exactly. There's whole villain redemption but arcs. You that shit's fuck tight. it up again because there's some fucking gears, and then the premise too very fucking tiring. It, it just yeah. You're babysitting the entire fucking time this anime. Okay, I'm glad we're doing it good cop, bad cop. You know what I mean? Because don't get me wrong. Like, because I already finished Digimon, like, almost two weeks ago, I feel like I've had more time to digest it. And don't get me wrong. Like, mm. when I was talking to you on Monday when we recorded the Spy Family episode with Karen, I was ragging on Digimon. I was like, mm. you're going to have a hell of a week, although this is going to be so bad. I'm sorry. Like, Roby's a fucking jerk for doing this to us. All that. Yeah. But the more I digest it, the more I get like boomers and nostalgia brain, and I'm like, I, I kind of miss it because <laughs> I understand what it did for the medium that I love so much. Like, mm. don't get me wrong. Like, if if you were to try to get somebody into Digimon and you're not gonna watch any of the recent seasons, any of the recent video games, even the card game, and you're like, no, we are gonna sit down and watch the first 21 episodes of Digimon Adventure 1999. That is mean. They are gonna hate it. They're gonna hate you. They're gonna hate their week. Like that's 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 mean. That mm -hmm. that is downright yeah. like harassment at that point. Yeah, I will defriend you if you, if you did that something. But no, we did this for. But a don't get me wrong. Like the more I think about it, the more I remember my watch of Digimon Adventure Tamers. The more I think about like season two because we finished on episode twenty one. We watched the first two arcs. We watched mm -hmm. the Devimon and the Edamon arcs, right? But the, la the last episode of the Edamon, Edamon arc is technically Ty introducing his sister into the world of Digimon. Mm -hmm. It's weird because like it reminds me a lot of the movie. That was like that came out like two thousand one, and like the production was really good. The whole art style changes because he's back in the real world, so it's less goofy and grainy. It's a lot more real. It's a lot more like it, fake people talking noises in the background. Like feels a lot more lush, a lot more filled. And then you're introduced to his younger sister, Ty's younger sister, who's one of my favorite characters because she basically sticks around for like three whole seasons. Mm -hmm. And her and TK become basically like the best Digi Destin out of this group, mm -hmm. which is funny because they're only like seven, eight years old compared to all the nine, ten years old, mm -hmm. ten year olds. But like, Jesus, like, like actually sitting down and spending what, that's like four hours of, four or five hours of like your week like honestly sitting there and watching Digimon like that's terrible it's so just just and it's all 90s humor it's all just like weird 90s humor it's all like and and what I was to my point earlier about this being like a dragged out uh, a dragged out uh, a, a Tamagotchi session I, I don't know if you guys ever played with a Tamagotchi I, I played with a Tamagotchi before and it's just you know, you have this thing that you have to virtually feed, hey, virtually yo. bathe, hey, virtually play with. Hey, yo. And you you see these episodes, at least for the first half of the first season, and it's just like, oh, we haven't eaten anything today. Oh, we haven't slept. Bro, the today. premise to every episode is, holy shit, we haven't <laughs> eaten today. Yeah, dude. And it's like, oh. It's so. And, and then they get food, but it wasn't real food. And then they give food. Always, they get tricked by fake food like four or five times. It's yeah. the worst. It's like watching like just the Team Rocket fail all the time. Oh, yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Because like the gimmick with like the Digimon Digivolving too. Because like there's, I, I forget what the first stage is called. But like when they meet them, they're in like the baby stage. The and, then, babies. and then they're normally in the rookie stage, the which is like. State. Yeah, like there's like the larval stage we meet, but then like the, there's the rookie stage which we normally see see them in. That's Agumon, yeah. that's uh, 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 Targumon, that's Padamon, yeah. that's all them. And then like for the first art, every time they did evolve, it's to the champion stage, right? That's where we get our Greymons, our Bergermons, our uh, Angemons, all those. But like, ah, uh, they're all such ugly character designs they're so so ugly like i know agumons like right. all of a sudden this iconic fucking character design because it's just like a baby t-rex right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but i want you to remember what like what what kabuterimon's cool okay but what what's like the red like 
bug thing. That one's super cool. I was gonna say, uh, hold on, give me one second. Terramon? No, it's yeah. it's a it's a. No, no, not the red T Rex. The red bug. This one. Yes. Yeah. No, 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 no. That's Izzy's Digimon. Oh, the the first enemy. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, the what first enemy. Name? The first enemy. Hold on, hold on. But like. Like, it's very hit or miss, because, like, if you think early Pokemon, even, like, the, the only reason Digimon exists, like, even though they don't have a lot of similarities, and the only reason they marketed it as a Mon show is it came out six years, six, seven years after the original Pokemon games for the Game Boy Color. Right? Kuwagamon? Kuwagamon? Kuwagamon. Yeah. Kuwagamon. Yeah, he's cool. Like, he's uh -huh. scary. But then, like, you get, like... Um, Centaurmon, or Goblinmon, or, like, Edamon's, like, the worst fucking characters, like, Seedramon's super basic, like, uh, the, the first, the first enemy, uh, Kawamon? 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 Kawamon. Kawamon? Kawamon, like, don't get me wrong, he appears on scene, and he's on frame and everything, but again, super clunky. Once you get into this frame of him being like in one third of the frame, yeah. like it's just him and like a background moving. And not only that, but like the main powers of every Digimon is just the same frame used over and oh over my again. God. It's yeah. like. So if you see one of them doing their special move, that special move frame is going to be used in, the, in another scene in a castle, in an open valley, in the water. It's, it's the same fucking thing. Sometimes they'll do it a little different. Like, it, it's clear. Because, like, if you've seen, like, the um, the videos of how they actually physically animate 2D animation, and the reason why in old, like, Disney cartoons, it, you can tell what's going to be in motion mm -hmm. because it's very much more outlined and highlighted, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So don't get me wrong. Like, they will switch the background sometimes. You mm -hmm. always see Bergeron's fucking bird flare wing scorch thing. Mm -hmm. And, like, the background does change, but... You're right, the character in, like, What's in Motion is always the exact same piece of movement. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's, like, pepper breath, and, like, it's, it, it, yeah, yeah, it's a pop, pop, like, it's, but then the background's a jungle, or it's a cave, or yeah. it's, it's, it's whatever, but, oh, it's just, like, a $5 animation budget, a $10 music budget, but then we splurge for the $15 voice actor budget, and now yeah. we just have people just, Saying whack '90s humor kind of stuff. Terrible, terrible. Unless some of those like confronting our first villain, like this bug-like Digimon. Uh, you know, somebody's like, "Oh, I should have brought. I knew I should have brought my bug spray." <laughs> oh no, I don't have my inhaler. What's mm -hmm. my mom gonna say? Yeah. Oh no, we fell down a gold. I hope I didn't break a nail. And as far as as far as the as far as the the, the character design for our Digimon, uh, the larva face. Hey, bro, if you would give me a chance, I will buy one of those. Any, but they're all so basic. They all they're, look exactly they're, they're, the same. Yeah, they're basic as fuck. Of course, yeah. Uh, but, like, uh, yeah, the the, char the character design for most of them are pretty fucking ugly. I really like the insect one. He seems more of a... It reminds me like... Izzy's Digimon. What's his name? Uh, to uh, Tentomon? Tentomon? Is, is that right? Tentomon. Tentomon? Okay. Uh, he reminds me of, like, Beetleborgs. Remember Beetleborg? Dog, I miss Beetleborg. I'm <laughs> so glad that you know Beetleborgs. Beetleborg. I feel like I even talk, try to talk about Beetleborgs with other people, uh -huh. and they have no that? idea what is I'm the, talking about. The Beetle Power Rangers. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, literally, they, they turn into, like, Hercules Beetles. Fuck like, that yeah. is their whole shtick. Their, their mentor, as opposed to being, what's his Voltron? What was his name? The, mm -hmm. the leader in, in, uh, in, in, in Power Rangers was, what's his name? Sword. Zordon, thank yeah. you. So as opposed to Zordon, their mentor was like some gay ghost clown. <laughs> <laughs> you get what I mean? But that was yeah. that was yeah. the show. It yeah. was so it was just like it knew it was a cheaper uh a cheaper um Power Rangers. Mm -hmm. it, it had the worst humor it was closer to like Digimon humor than like Power Rangers humor. Yeah. But it was more goofy. It was so much yeah. more goofy, but yeah. just it being a more tightly knit group. If, well, like, the it, outfits were badass. The outfits were tight. Everything like, was, like, lined in the beetle outfit, yeah. like, was tight. The big old eyes and shit, crazy. And it had, like, a more fluid, like, character, like, like team dynamic, even. Mm -hmm. Because, like, even Digimon, like... There was they, no they, hierarchy or anything Yeah, they like called Ty the leader once, and he's just, like, the leader forever. Just yeah. because... 
it, they, the, they just it's just easier to write the characters if yeah. there's just clear like power dynamics right mm -hmm. but uh beetleborgs had a bunch of shit going on did, did you ever watch um uh uh, uh beast wars Beast Wars? Yes. Beast Wars. Beast Wars. Yeah, it sounds familiar. So, so, or, like, um, you've seen, have, have you ever seen the, the original uh, Transformers? Yes. The 80s one, right? Yes. So in the 90s, Beetleborgs. No, I know what Beetleborgs is. Yeah, I know, but I haven't seen them in a while. But I'll like, a picture right here. So you guys can like, see. my favorite show as a kid was Beast Wars, uh -huh. which was Transformers. <laughs> <laughs> Transformers characters, so it's it's uh, Optimus Prime, it's um, it's uh, Megatron. Oh, oh, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah you yeah, know what that is, right? Yeah. It was a show. Yeah, yeah it was yeah. an all three D animated show that came out in the nineties. Yeah, but instead of like cars, it was like animals. animals. Like it was yeah. like Cheetor, and like yeah. Optimus Prime turned into a gorilla. No, and yeah. Megatron was a was a T Rex. T -Rex. Yeah, and, like. There was a there was a Velociraptor character and like a mm -hmm. a, a Black Widow character, yeah. it, and it was ugly as fuck. I am completely confident that we ever went back to it, like we'd just be like, "Wow, it's so ugly." But I remember it having the same humor, and I was obsessed with it. Like these mm -hmm. cheap one liners. Like it'll be the kids in Digimon walking through a desert, which like they're always walking through deserts. Like half of all episodes start with them walking through a desert. And they'll be Mimi being like, this is lame. I'd rather be in a mall. It's funny how, it's funny how, like, that aspect of, like, Japanese pop culture, like, just leaked this way into, like, most of America. Like, Power Rangers, Beetleborg, and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Because if you guys didn't know, like, Power Rangers is so cheap to make because once you have the, the franchise's footage of the fight, all you have to do is replace your voice actors. Right. You know, so... Any any scene that is made with the the characters off like w off uniform, yeah, it's it's that's the only thing being produced. It's actual actors, so. yeah. So that's why like each like between the Japanese version and like the American version, the American one's so different because we had actual Americans like going through like well, it was them in high school, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, and then there were the bullies and the bullies, yeah. and then they'd always be going to like this restaurant and stuff mm -hmm. like almost like a little bar at yeah. the school kind of like uh friends in the in the cafe or some shit like exactly that. exactly and the thing about digimon is it's like a lot of the same where like exactly it's friends humor it's mm -hmm. just gag stick like one like it's it's seinfeld humor mm -hmm. it's it's god 90s had the worst humor didn't it honestly <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not really big on seinfeld I'm, I'm not, I've never been big on Seinfeld. I've never been big on Friends. Uh, do you like uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm? Curb Your Enthusiasm? Yeah. The, the one where the dad committed like a felony. He's like on the run and hiding in the basement. No, no, no. I'm thinking of... No. The... I'm not thinking of Curb Your Enthusiasm. No, I'm thinking of, not at all. I'm thinking of... Uh, oh, God. What am I thinking about? No, Curb Your Enthusiasm is with uh, with a comedian. The, the sketch comedy. Well, not sketch comedy, but like the comedy one with uh, David... David... What was that funny guy, David? David, David, Somebody. what's his name? Truncate silence. Hold on, do you want to just... I'm thinking of Arrested Development. I am I am completely oh. thinking about Arrested Development. No, 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 I know, th I know that one. Uh, uh, with uh, Larry David, Larry David. Uh, Curb Your Enth Enthusiasm. Oh, oh, the original Curb Your Enthusiasm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Like, I never I, watched it, but I get what you mean. Yeah, I yeah. like that better than Seinfeld. Seinfeld, I don't know, Jerry Seinfeld, dog. Uh, he's not that funny. No, dude, he's not that funny. He thinks he's peak comedy, but he's not peak comedy, dude. It's it's funny it's, because it, it's it, the most, like, unproblematic comedy show ever. Because mm -hmm. when you even see, like, Elon Musk on Friday or Thursday tweeting, like, You'll never be funny because you're too woke, and woke as it means you're not allowed to understand I comedy. Hate that. Jerry Seinfeld would take it offense to that because Jerry Seinfeld is the most funny, unproblematic comedian. Mm -hmm. Like, and it, it takes and it, and it takes effort to do that. No, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Like you're right because like imagine being the number one show in the world for how many seasons of Seinfeld? Well, it was uh, it was the longest running, but Sunny of Philadelphia just outdone him. Uh, I think Seinfeld is like 14 or 12 No, seasons? no, not length. I was saying uh, it was the number one show in the world. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I it was the you, number I one oh, show I you, yes, in yes. terms of popularity. Yes, yes, yes. 
So that's like where Jerry Seinfeld always has those interviews where he's just like, dog, I was at the top of the world, like about to get stupid money. They wanted to renew the contract. And I was like, no, I don't want to drag it out. I don't want to ruin the legacy that is the Seinfeld show by dragging it out longer than it needs to be, a la France. Yeah, but that show was long, though. You know? Like... But then how many seasons yeah. was Seinfeld? Though? I think I think it was like 14 or something like that because if 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 Sun in Philadelphia just did their 15th season. Jesus, we are old. Oh. I remember when that shit came out. Honestly, I remember being excited about seeing Danny DeVito. I've always looked... I, I have always liked Danny DeVito in like Twins and... and uh, was the pregnant one? With, well, with... he was the goat in Hercules, too. Oh, he was the little goat. He yeah. was the little goat man in Hercules. But I think, like, what you got confused on, before we started recording, you thought I hated South Park, and or I wasn't big on South Park, or I didn't follow South Park. And that's not true. I think you were confused because I've never kept up with It's Always Sunny. I have never liked It's Always Sunny. Sunny, Sunny South 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 great. Nine seasons of Seinfeld. That's not a lot. No. That's not a lot. Even compared to even something like How I Met Your Mother or something mm-hmm. like that, it's not that much. Uh, I thought it was. I thought it was longer. There's a. It feels like it's yeah, longer. That's what I'm yeah. talking about. Like it's such like a staple, and it's only nine seasons. Only uh, only air quotes nine seasons. Are we gonna reel it back? I can keep talking about this, but are we gonna reel it back or? <sighs> Whatever. Just let it go. Yeah, Whatever. just let it go. We're letting it go, guys. We're letting it go right now. Uh, there's honestly if nothing... I decide to bring up Digimon in another 10 minutes I'll bring it back up okay we'll bring it back up and this is the most the most the most uh, 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 easy transfer nerd down nerd down? no this is not technically the nerd down but it might be the nerd down it's a fluid nerd down but sure nerd down nerd down I, wish, I just need a spot to put this on there. okay 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 nerd down but anyways it, it, it's because like what Digimon gets me thinking about is just the 90s in general. Like, it's... I I, I am 1,000% certain that the Japanese dub does not translate nearly mm-hmm. as, like, crazy 90s American humor as the, the dub does, right? There's, yeah. there, there's just no way. Which I almost wish I'd watched the sub this week because, like, mm-hmm. I want to see exactly how different it is. Yeah, because like, if you think about, like, American cartoons, even something as, like, you know, Bugs Bunny or... Or, you know, old episodes of Popeye or some shit like that. Like, as an American, you look back at old cartoons, and the dialogue is not cringy. It's just oh, yeah. a cartoon. You know what I'm saying? So, in but, Japan... But then, you, but then you turn, like, Batman and Robin on. And but, you're just like, that's bad 90s writing. Like, just like... Anime series Batman? No, no, no. Batman and Robin, the movie. Oh, oh, yes, 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 yes. Do you get what I yes, mean? Yes, like, yes. that was, like, really bad. Like, what, like... like Good. Jerry Seinfeld ruined comedy? For like 10 years. Like good Jerry Seinfeld was so good. And Friends. Uh-huh. Jerry Seinfeld and, and Friends were so popular. Uh-huh. That they ruined comedy. For like 10 years. It's kind of that whole. Uh, what did I relate this to recently? I related this to. Uh, 90's anime. And Neon Ge- Genesis Evangelion. That like. In, in relation to Triga. Because mm-hmm. every 90's anime. Has a trope. Where they try to be NGE. At least for a couple episodes. Yeah. And that's because NGE was so good and such like like it broke what it meant to write anime, especially like fi- fantasy sci fi anime. Mm-hmm. That every anime and manga for like ten years tried to do that, but even NGE couldn't get it right the first time. Yeah, like that's why you have to watch NGE, the end of Evangelion, the to only, even understand the anime. The only, the only like one of the things that saves NGE from its plot is that the creator was like. What are you talking about? This is not Catholic at all. <laughs> what are you talking about? All these crucifixions, <laughs> all these crucifixions, yeah, yeah. and all these crosses, and there's like, no cat, there's no religious uh, uh, anything behind this. But but see, that's also why I think you might like uh, the Fate series uh-huh. you're because not, it's, you're not get scared. You're not almost scared Catholic. N- right. Not scared, but it's very like the Catholic Church is evil and works with every secret government and is out here trying to like collude with Diddle anybody. Kids. Just crazy shit like that. Like, that's how the... Because, like, when I introduced myself to the Fate series, right? As opposed to Digimon or all this other stuff where, like, you know, I was just growing up watching it. And we've talked about, like, the Adult Swim effect before. The Adult Swim, yes. Where, like, a, a lot of people, what they remember of Trigun, what they remember of, of 
Oh, I almost said, no, Inuyasha, yeah. Inuyasha. What they remember of Inuyasha is what you caught glimpses of in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. And then, so much after the heyday of, like, Adult Swim, which if I'm considering, like, peak Adult Swim, like, late 90s or early 2000s, so, like, 99, 2000, 2001, like, peak early, like, Toonami Adult Swim-ish stuff to about, like, what, like, 07, 08, mm -hmm. stuff like that. It was already like 2013, 2014 that I was just up in the middle of the night studying for school during Adult Swim. And there's like this crazy batshit scene of like these two people just committing mass murder inside of a Catholic church. And there must have been a, a full week or two when I was trying to study for a test where I was just trying to figure out what fucking anime this was. Like in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. Like just up, fell asleep, watched some crazy shit and just like knocked out. Didn't remember what, I, what it was or what I was watching. Mm -hmm. And then I Google it, I figure it out. It's like, dude, you just watched Fate Zero. Mm -hmm. You watched one episode of Fate Zero. I was like, that should lock down. Now I gotta watch it. Now, yeah. now, I, gotta, now I gotta watch this, this crazy evil church blasphemous shit. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm with it. I'm with it. That's going to be our next episode on, on Between Earths, episode 107. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, it's not that I dig it. It's just so funny to me sometimes how scared people are of this shit. So Digimon's bad. Uh, another thing that I was talking about Digimon, I know this is a very, very smooth transitioning into, into our nerd down, but giving... Other existing characters in Digimon, other Digimon in there, giving them little re redemption arcs. Because there's this stupid thing about the gears, they, they it's a computer virus, but it seems, oh, dude, every time the gears are in frame, it's just CGI and it's so bad because the, like, the... But that the, shit broke your brain in 1999. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude, it, it, like, it breaks and it's supposed to be like this break like into the Matrix, though, but it's just like gears. Not even in locked, it's just gears. It, it is kind of like some Matrix writing almost, even though this came out like around the same time, because it's like, especially in the beginning, uh, they're, they're, like most of the Digimon is supposed to be nice. It's supposed to be like Pokemon, like they're, they're, the Digimon are like Pokemon, except they're closer to it's human personalities. World. It's yeah, a it's, a, world. it's a peaceful world, but then like people are getting infected with these gears that are being produced by, no, that are being controlled by Devimon. I remember as a kid, like, the Devimon character is that, like, broken. Like, he's got straps and all black and has a bunch of skulls. But then I see it this week, I'm just like, holy shit, I was such a bitch as a kid. Like, this no. is so, like... Like, don't get me wrong. I feel like the Angemon versus Devimon scene still holds a lot of weight because we go, like, an extra ordinary amount of episodes that, like, a new Digimon has in Digivolved. And we still haven't seen Padamon's Digivolution. But then, like, he digivolves into Angemon. It's this huge thing against Devimon. And Devimon is ginormous because he's infected mm -hmm. himself with a bunch of the gears. And now he's extra evil. And, like, he had tricked the kids originally because all they wanted is shelter and food. And he tricked them into this mansion and gave them fake food and fake beds. And then scattered them across the world to weaken them. So Angemon, just, like, holding together, like, all the power of the digivices and, like, basically, like, draining himself completely and just doing this big angel punch thing. Like, it, it holds a lot of the same weight. It really does. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, like, I, you know, you get those goosebumps, like, when Patamon, when Patamon's about to digivolve. He's just like, okay. holy shit, I've been waiting 12 episodes for this. He's gonna digivolve. He's gonna digivolve. Like, my skin's crawling. Yeah, and but that's coming from, like, a fucking 10 year old kid nine year old kid you know yeah, yeah yeah you're you're watching this and you're like oh shit but like right now when i'm watching i'm like mm -hmm. and something something that is not considered an, an anime like avatar airbender mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying it holds up and it's been holding up see uh, like that's why i do want to watch avatar the last airbender like don't mm -hmm. get me wrong i feel like it probably holds up better than like digimon absolutely but i think I don't want to give it too much credit until we've seen it. Yeah, of course. Because, you like... You don't want to look like a dumbass? Yeah, because, like, we keep doing that. Like, we keep being like, oh, the original Bleach is so tight, blah, 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 blah. I hate Jujutsu Kaisen. The, the craziest take of 2022 is that, like, although I, I hated apologize. Jujutsu Kaisen... I had a formal but, like, apology. could not, like, get rid of this, like, Bleach motor. Like, this whole time we're talking about. formal apology, it. just like the Sean but, Watson. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> but but see that's what I mean. Like, I I hope that We're not wrong. Avatar has actually <laughs> held up. But like, I'm gonna be like super embarrassed that we watched 
book one, which is, is I think, water. I think book one is water. Yeah. It's only like twenty one episodes, twenty two episodes. The and like I hope it's as good as I remember, but like it, ha I what I remember is it has a lot of that old Nickelodeon humor, which reminds me a lot of this old Digimon humor. Yeah, like really bad like American gag humor, which it had a lot of the same one liners. It had. Like, we were complaining Trigon a lot about that, like, really boring episodes would just throw in gag. And that's mm. supposed to make it a halfway decent episode. And but at least Avatar Airbender is original to its theme. And being, like, almost like a uh, 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 Game of Thrones-y but, but see, that's what I mean. That's like saying that you can't say Bleach Season 1 is ass because Bleach no, Season 3 is good. I'm not saying... I'm not, okay, okay. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that something like... Uh, Trigon, okay. it wasn't even trying to be original. It was just, uh, you it's know, just another NG. It's, ju it's just another NG, it's another Cowboy Mash, you know, Cowboy Bebop Mash, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. at least Airbender, if it's going to have faults, it's going to have original faults to it. Right. You know, instead of like, oh, you tried to do NG, or you tried to do Cowboy Bebop while Cowboy Bebop was still going on. Oh, yeah. Like, no, I get it. I get it completely. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the thing about the Digimon, which. I remember as a kid thinking it was really significant and kind of important. It was that, like, after we beat Devimon and we get the champion evolutions mm -hmm. from everybody, right? Is that they, they introduced the idea of, like, no, you're on this tiny island. There's this bigger continent. Like, you got to come to... And, and all the islands and, and continents are named after, like, 90s tech computer humor. It's like... Oh, there's, there's Nokia computer... Yeah, yeah, Nokia yeah. Island is here. What did they call it? They this, called the main continent uh, Lenovo. They call D Data Island or something, yeah, yeah. or it's just weird RAM RAM yes. section. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. We gotta get to the RAM Island. The RAM Island's always been peaceful. Which, like, my understanding of the most recent like Digimon video game is that they kind of redone the, because, like, the original Digimon con conception was that like. The, the digital world we created, the dot-com boom was happening at the time, like, it, we, we were having this cultural revolution because of the internet becoming readily accessible to everyday people, that we were just, like, making things up. So, like, there was this whole digital world where the Digimon come from that was created out of the internet. But now they've redone that origin story where it's kind of like, um, there were always these spirits, always these natural beings that because of the internet have we we now recognize them as Digimon because mm -hmm. of our influence with the digital world. Crazy, crazy. So so like they are trying to revamp the history. It's like Star Wars almost. You know what I mean? They're mm -hmm. they're gonna redo uh, uh uh the plot every ten years to try to explain like what the force was. Oh it's Midichlorians. What's the force? Oh it was Midichlorians, but now we kind of don't mm -hmm. care and we, it's like that kind of. Yeah. But um, as a kid, the point I was trying to get to is after we get the champion evolutions, they introduce the idea of the tags, like the crests, mm -hmm. where the, every d digi destined has a crest or a tag that is more attuned to their personality type. Tag has courage. There's the, the smart tag. There's the, the luck tag, mm -hmm. which is like the meanest one. <laughs> like yeah. your skill is luck, yeah. like, it, or, or stuff like that, that they're going to have to overcome some kind of. Uh, trial and that's how they're gonna receive their tag and that's gonna allow their Digimon to to digivolve into a fully evolved Digimon into the ultimate level Digimon which is like mm -hmm. ah, it's a it's a lot it's, but it's tiring it gets corny because every episode is so just like formulaic it's just so like god like we only watch half of the original Digimon adventures which is like 59 episodes we watched like 21 episodes so we also less than half Mm -hmm. But like God, I can't imagine watching anymore. I I cannot imagine. But if you guys want us to keep watching, uh, I'm hoping you don't. I I I I, I predict we get like six views on YouTube off this shit. <laughs> like, there's nobody searching for Digimon content like this. Nope. And and that's pretty much how our net works because we're trying to watch everything. So like every nerd has something to look up in in the fucking search bar. Like right. I imagine a nerd being like. <laughs> Well, this was on Digimon. Right. Just oh, like, this was made six months ago? This is the most recent Digimon content. And, and that's why I think that the Mushoku Tensei one was so good, because it's like, 
Me, myself, I bought like uh, the the light novel seven for the Mushiko Tensei series. Like I was so desperate for more Mushiko Tensei co content. Like as soon as we watched the anime, I was just like, this is like the best kept secret of anime. I cannot believe that this is not more popular than 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 my hero. I cannot believe this is more popular than like even the current Dragon Ball shit going on right now. Like it's just so good. It's like evil that nerds don't give a shit. Mm. So, like, I, I think that's why we have so much discourse. Like, people that actually care. Like, that are actually looking at Mushiko Tensei content mm. and finding our video. And, like, that's, I think that's why they take it so personally when we're not, like, perfect with describing and, it. And that's why we're here. And that's why we want you guys to enter. So, because, honestly, one of the comments where he cleared up uh, the the different type of uh, arts that uh, Paul had uh, sword uh, had learned yeah the sword arts uh, I, I i really appreciated that he was like hey just to be clear is this this and this I'm but like, then oh. we always get those that are like oh, that you, are like you, how you're so stupid how do you not know this like yeah, but you take every comment with like a shot of vinegar do i i think so i feel like sometimes with a shot of 151 <laughs> and with a shot of 151 just dirty <laughs> and uh like i read a comment and I would read it, and then you would be like, "Did you see what this nerd put?" And I'm like, it "Wasn't that bad?" He was just clearing some stuff up. I don't because I feel and like I know how nerds are. Like yes, they're always I, I feel so like, like I, you always have like, "Well, actually, you know, yeah, 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 yeah." No, but comments are good. I like reading comments; they make me laugh. Me too. When, what, especially what? when you have things like, "I've been part of the medium for a decade." <laughs> it. It's funny because, like, you know, like, when we were, like, 16, 17, we didn't have context like that. We could be like, I've been watching anime for a decade. So you've been watching anime since you were six? Is that what you're telling me? Yeah. All right, good for you. Like, what are you talking about? Like, you watched Pokemon when you were six? Like, yeah, we did, like, too. <laughs> but, and, and see, like, watching Digimon this week, if anything, makes me not want to watch Pokemon. And, but then what I, I got... I don't want to watch Pokemon. But then what it got me thinking about was that we did watch Bleach, right? We've seen, like, the, the first few arcs of One Piece. I feel like I was looking up the first arc of Naruto, and it's, like, 20 or so comparable episodes, but it doesn't even get to, like, the the Chinchuroki exam arc, uh -huh. which is, like, when Naruto, like, first became peak Naruto, right? Uh -huh. So we're just going to be watching the bunk episodes before it actually got good. Yeah. And we're going to have that same take we, we had, like, at the end of Bleach Season 1, where it's, like, the Bleach season that everyone remembers is Bleach season three. three. Yeah. And we watched season one. So which means that, like, to even get to the good Bleach, we need a whole nother bunk oh. Bleach episode yeah. to even get to, like, the good episode. To, like, good shit, yeah. Yeah, because... And who knows if it's even that good. Yeah. As good as we remember. Like, we could finally get there and be like, fuck, girl. Yeah, because in my it. head, all season one was one episode. Like, before we watched it. You yeah. know? And now you actually know the full season. And you're, you're yeah. worse for the part. You, you are worse for knowing it. And it makes, me, it, it makes me sad because once we start talking about things like Pokemon, things like Naruto, things like Dragon Ball Z, things like things like the top three and stuff like that, it's so sad that nerds and communities get so like shrink down or focused or 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 vaguely looked at just by that one like community. Mm -hmm. The, so there's so much good anime, dude. And I brought up Violet Evergarden. Like, Violet Evergarden universe is crazy. Yeah. Even even uh, in time of peace. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. If they, were, if they were to put a war arc in there, like... In Violet Evergarden? It, that would be crazy. That, that basically be the plot to Tanya the Evil. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But, like, I don't know. It's just... There's so much good anime. And, and talking about Naruto makes me sad. <sighs> it, it, it's because like I, I don't know if that was loud enough I don't want to watch Naruto I don't either but like mm. I do think we, we owe it to our nerds yeah we need that take but like I'll totally wait for like the discourse to get up there enough like enough people actually saying watch Naruto watch Naruto because honestly I was thinking of episodes that we could do and we have a few of our friends that could do some of these like even after, so next week we're watching, or this upcoming week for the next episode, we're going to be talking about uh, Fate Zero, uh, the 2009 version. And um, I, I, I don't know any of our friends that have watched that, but then the week after that we're watching One Punch Man. Mm -hmm. 
all of our friends have watched One Punch Man. Like, mm-hmm. we could just pick anybody that's been a guest on on this podcast, podcast. before. Yeah. And, and, like, they could talk about it with us. Friendly. Such a great anime. You know, you... you season one was. Well... Season I, two, they switched studios. Yes, and it, it was kind of crappy, but I mean, <laughs> like... What? That's what I mean. Like, you're about to make an excuse for it. Like, it's kind of crappy, and then... But it's such original content. You could make the same argument for Digimon, and we, we've been ripping mm, into Digimon for almost two mm, hours already. I don't think so, because I... The last time I watched was season one and two of One Punch Man was not so long ago. It was probably like two years ago. Like three, I think. Three? I think I think season two came out in 2019. Okay. So, it, it's I mean, so... Season two came it's out so... Now. It's so goofy, and it's obviously just like making fun of Dragon Ball Z and Earth. Yeah. That it's so good. And it's the same creator as Mob Psycho. We like Mob Psycho. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And... One Punch Man is like Digimon in the aspect that they did have really good ideas, but but where Digimon had a bad execution, One Punch Man had a good execution. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because they gave they gave uh, uh, a throwaway characters an arc in each episode, mm-hmm. almost. You know. But I like. I think this is where like One Punch Man and Mob Psycho 100 have like me in like a like a fit almost because I I agree with you I think Mob Psycho 100 is 1000 percent the more a hundred percent ah thank you the the hundred percent like like it it is the definitive interpretation of what One Punch Man always meant to be right mm-hmm. that's Mob Psycho 100 but even though they're both written by the author one the One Punch Man Manga is still ongoing. Mm-hmm. He's not doing Mob Psycho 100 anymore. Yeah, like Mob Psycho 100 is better, which I don't know if it has a real end in the manga or not, and that scares me almost because mm-hmm. it's like after season three of Mob Psycho 100, are we just going to be like left hanging? And, and I mean, and now that I'm thinking about it, I, I I also don't know what's the end of Mob Psycho or if it does have an end. But like, well, keep can... in mind for the for the podcast, we haven't even watched season two. No, we haven't. And what I was gonna say is that you're telling me that 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 it's ended, and you don't know if you have a good ending to it. Uh, it just reminds me of, and not in a bad way, but this is a a parody of like a Demon Slayer kind of anime where it's short and sweet and it finishes. Hopefully, yeah. it has a good ending to it. Yeah, yeah, you know? absolutely. Uh, but it does. It is as serious, but it, it is as goofy as One Punch Man. It is. You it know. is. But, like, the thing about One Punch Man is the gimmick, the gag, is that you don't have to write it well. Because, like, he can win any fight with One Punch. Like, that's know. the gag, that's the gimmick, okay. As whatever. much as he struggles, as much as it's going to happen. At, at least with Mob Psycho 100, it's the same dynamic, that he's just the best psychic, period. Like, he mm-hmm. can do a power level times, times infinity. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But... His personality has to get him there. His yeah. his outside stimuli have to get him to that spot. He's always trying to calm himself down. He's like, just like, dude, I have infinite psychic power. Can you yeah. just not Chill? piss me like, off right now? I, like Psyduck is like, blah, 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 exactly, blah, blah, blah. exactly. Yeah. Like like, just, dude, I will murder all of us. Just Let chill me have out. First. Yeah, <laughs> chill out before I kill everybody in this room. One Punch Man's always just like. My understanding after season one and two is just it's a lot of like developing every outside character because Saitama is it's impossible to build on him. Okay. Like he's yep. just the best always. And and that's what I'm saying. Like it, it's it makes so much fun of Dragon Ball because Dragon Ball hasn't done any of those things. Yeah, you know. I am gonna be watching the Dragon Ball Super Heroes movie, the new one uh, this week, the one with Gohan. And I Kuro. heard it was terrible. It's the worst performing Dragon Ball film ever. Ever. But you could also um, make the excuse that it's because it premiered at the same time in Japan as One Piece Film Red, which is the most successful One Piece film of all time. Mm -hmm. So you could make the excuse that it's the same moviegoers. Like, when given the option on opening weekend, they're going to go see One One Piece Film Red. And they're not gonna watch go. They're not gonna go watch Dragon Ball Super Heroes, which is the same thing we've seen a million times. Mm-hmm. So 
I, I'm just, I'm going to watch it either way, and I'm really hoping that, like, One Piece Film Red makes it to the States, like, real soon. I, I think they already have a date. I, I Who? One Piece Film Red. Oh, oh okay, okay. Uh, so I do want to see it in theaters. I'm probably going to go to that one most see it. And uh, it's just a lot. I don't know. Uh, we we also uh, caught up on the near on the on the on the most uh, recent sci-fi movie, Prey. Prey. Uh, you said you didn't like it. it I it, did. It, it. It's sci-fi slasher. It's not strictly sci-fi. It, it's more of a slasher movie. If you've ever seen a Predator movie, it's like that. Yeah. It's yeah. Le- it's less alien, more Predator. Yes, yes, yes. But uh, uh, the uh, the only gripe I have about Prey. Is that I could have seen the sub of it, like you did not have to translate it in English. It's like, weird if you that were all really the Native Americans it, know English. If it's you were really that... about, it's because they 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 put you in a plane of like, as an audience, you now understand native language, right. so it sounds like English to you. Right. So they put you in that in the space of of of, of, of communication of language. And the language barrier is not there because you know native, you see these native people and you understand them. But like I could have watched if if you really wanted to represent the people. Yeah. So you're thinking like a like a apocalypto. It, 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 it was yeah, all subtitles. And, and I'm not talking about like this woke kind of fucking take on it. It's just that like, it is a little bit It's not authentic. The, the audience doesn't want to feel dumb. Right. And I just saw a recent a recent interview, actually on the Hot Ones episode with Neil Patrick Harris. Oh, that's funny. You know what I'm saying? And he's like, I hate when shows give you a like coming up. This isn't that. It's like, bitch, I'm engaged already. Don't dump me down to stay in the in the show. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it, it feels it feels like that. That's the only gripe I have. My thing is, like... Because they kept the French dialect in the movie, but not the native dialect in the movie, and you have me reading some French assholes subtitles? They, the way, when instead I, of, like, the main character? Before me and Karen watched it, and I was asking people at work about it, like, I only work with people that are, like, 40 and up, right? And I was asking them what they thought about the movie. They're just like, oh, well, it has this very feminist writing, and, like, it's just... Just, just, just focus on the woman, and, like, this, this, and that. And, like... That made me want to watch so it. You don't more. like your wife. I get it, Greg. That, you don't that, like your wife. Well, this is like recently divorced people <laughs> saying this. So like I get why she divorced you, bro. Like it's, <laughs> it's fine. But like ah, uh, like even people were mad this week about like the first Did you watch She Hulk? Yes, I did watch okay, She-Hulk. Okay, I watched the first episode episode of She Hulk. Episode. Uh just like everything else, bro, does any writing Towards women, nerds on the internet just lose their fucking mind. Like, there were so many people tweeting out the clip of, um, of, uh, what's her face? She Hulk going on the spiel about how she went to school and she's a woman and she's underestimated. And then Hulk just being like, yep, that's right. That's why you should do that. Everyone was mad about it. Dog. In episode, I didn't even realize that. I that didn't even. I didn't what? even see what it I was happened. Just, I was just looking at a person of the female gender being a female character. I didn't even realize <laughs> that that was a scene that I was supposed to be mad about. I cannot believe that any time there's any feminist writing anything, it could be the most minute, like slept on piece of dialogue. Nerds on the internet will take it so personally. I think it's the personal aspect that pisses me off the most. Like, they, the, the worst they smell, the worst takes they have. On right, head. like, it, it really, like, it hurts them physically that there's feminist writing in comic book mediums. Dude, girls are tight, bro. It's, I think that it's and, just and so tight, crazy they, to and me. And if you're tight, they might like you bad, dog. It, it, uh, it, it's it's just terrible, so, it, and it's terrible. You don't, I didn't realize it in episode. Like, I thought it was a fun episode. It was, it it was, was a good episode. It was a tight 30 minutes. Oh, the good first episode. It, it was funny. I giggled a couple times. Like, it humanized the Hulk because even in the MCU, like, movie universe, we have not humanized the Hulk a lot. Like, Bruce mm-hmm. Banner, we know he's super beast. important. Yeah. Like, we know that he had this relationship with Tony, with uh, with, with Steve, and that, they like... They mentioned Tony's drinking. They mentioned which, Tony... Which they mentioned is, Aldo Mendes is drinking. They like, mentioned Aldo Mendes is drinking. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it, it, like, it was this huge thing. Like, because, like, what we... What, like, 
a lot of comic book nerds, well, maybe you can correct me on this, is that, like, what a lot of people like about Marvel comic books is that they humanize the characters a lot more. Like, Tony Stark is a lot more than just, like, just Iron Man. Like, he has his whole personality as Tony Stark outside of that. Well, the actual reason why Iron Man retired was because his drinking cut off to him. See what I mean? Like, the MCU, like, never develops them outside of their hu- superhero personas, which I get, because it's a film. It's a movie, you know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah. the, like, we get three or four scenes per Iron Man movie of Pepper Potts, and that's, like, his humanization for the movie. So then we right. actually go do superhero Look, As a comic book nerd, if, if Endgame would have ended in, 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 in Tony Stark drinking himself out of the Avengers, that would have been awesome for me, but because I like dirty shit like that, you know what I'm yeah. saying? I like shit that really, it, it pull, like, you know, pulls out your heartstrings. But, like, that's not going to happen because it's not digestible for the people. And then what I fucking hate about nerds, talking about fucking she Cole, talking about the Marvel Universe, all this fucking, like, uh, uh, hive mind fucking assholes on Reddit, assholes yeah. on Twitter, assholes on anywhere, anywhere, just... Because or just because they're anonymous in their page and just say dumbass shit or even TikTok fucking content guys like this is what the CGI used to be now look at the CGI. shut the fuck up bro like you don't so even notice it it's I thought the CGI was really good in She Hulk yeah. like Bruce Banner in this much speaking motion we haven't really seen it you know what I mean like and I thought it looked really good I think she looked really good in CGI I think they did a really good job like I think the actual credible reports that Marvel's just fucking dickheads, like, mm-hmm. in post-production is valid concerns. But, like, I don't think the animation's the issue. No. I really don't think it's it not. is. It's not. And, uh, like, it sucks, because shout out to you, uh, Dominic. Uh, but, like, I watch a lot of movies with Dami. Uh, he, he, he's fond of a lot of movies, and we have a lot of, like, similar tastes about, like, certain movies and other movies. But, like, like, that whole hive mind of Reddit and TikTok and post in the internet has gotten to him in the Marvel aspect of, of films. I'm like, bro, these are not brain-breaking movies, dog. This is your this is your Marvel movie. Again, owned by Disney. I'm happy to see these characters on screen. Yeah. That's all you have to be happy about. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not, it's not gonna, it's not gonna mind-break your fucking brain just because you want it to. You know? No, yeah. And, and I, he'll he'll say shit like, um, first episode of She-Hulk was, kind of, was not bad. I'm like, bro, just say it's good. Like, you like it. It's like, just say it's good. It was funny. You it know what I'm cool. saying? It, it was, was a good, It's a lawyer show. It's a lawyer, it's a lawyer show, but in the Marvel Universe. And he it's tells cool. you that that's at funny. the beginning. Like, this is a female lawyer show. That's fine. That's, that's cool. Fine. That's funny. Like, that's... It's I just nerds It's just... They just, they just cannot... St- because, like... I think that, uh, what's it called? Uh, Miss Marvel, right? That was the show. Captain Marvel's the movie, right? Miss Marvel had very. <laughs> right, I didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, Miss Marvel had very credible, like, issues when it came to storyboarding, when it came to dialogue, when it came to just, like, a bunch of other shit. But, like,. I feel like the internet never had that discussion because it was just always like, there's a show about a Muslim woman on on Disney+. Plus. I, I'm so upset right now that like we couldn't actually get to the point that these nerds actually watch the show, which mm. that's fine. Like, If you don't like the show, you don't like the show, but watch the show and mm. then like decide that you don't like it. Yeah. Don't just be like, oh, brown, woman. brown woman on Marvel, I can't do this. And, and honestly, I... I... I do think the Miss uh, uh, Captain Marvel movie was good. I just don't like Brie Larson's acting. I hate Brie Larson. Yeah, it's not. It's not about her being a woman character. Honestly, I almost have like a sexist take on that one. Because... It sounds sexist, but it's no, not n- sexist. No, sexist. not your take. It's like, ah, fuck. I don't even know how to say this. Is, is that like? Uh, we'll cut it. We'll cut it. Just the, the, the thing about Miss Marvel we'll in the comic books is she's supposed to be hot. And like she's like um, gender, and, and she's like sexually fluid, we don't and like, like pasty she, white women. She's just hot and could buck anybody. Like I'll pick that, I'll pick that girl, I'll pick that dude, I'll pick like it doesn't matter. Like yeah. she's she's Captain Marvel, you know? Like, like she's just like X Men Rogue. Yeah, thank yeah. you, thank you. Like X Men Rogue kind of shit. Like dude, I'm gender fluid. I'll steal your, your energy from you. You're tight, but like, but like, but like, Brie Larson, even in the pre production for Miss Marvel, was just like dude. Like, she would go on interviews being like, these nerds are mad that I'm not hot, hot enough to play Captain Marvel, so I'm going to actively try to be not hot. 
And it was just kind of like, <laughs> like, well, well, what? like why are you doing this? This well, is so um, mean. Elizabeth Olsen, she requested a non... Olivia Olsen. Elizabeth Olsen. Elizabeth? Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Yes. Okay. Elizabeth Olsen. All Elizabeth right. Thank Olsen. You. I'm sorry. I can't hear. I'm sorry. Elizabeth Olsen. Uh, You're talking about Scarlet Witch. Scarlet Witch. Thank you. Okay. She, okay. She requested a a a a a non lewd costume for her. Right. You know what I'm saying? She didn't want to. She didn't want to show any. But chest. she's bad fully clothed. Like huh? she like Elizabeth Olsen is like. Oh no! Absolutely. She's a knockout. Fully absolutely. Clothed. absolutely. And even even like her decision came from principle, and she decided to make. The, she, but she, she still acts it. the character. She, 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 she knocks out the exactly. part. Like, and then, like what are all those memes? Like, immediately after the most recent Doctor Strange movie came out, like, Mommy Olsen, like, yeah, she, she's bad. She's absolutely gorgeous. She's, well, she had an interview, like, in the red carpet. It's like, well, what do you think about people calling you Mommy? It's like, I like it. And that like, bitch knows I, what she's doing. I love you. Love, the, love uh, her so much. Like, there's no way that she could be canceled from the MCU. She can be dead in the MCU. Just her, the way she acts about like people loving her character as portrayed. I Sweetheart. love her Sweetheart. so much. Anyways, Brie Larson, on the other hand, she's just like people are keep trying to lewd me and they want me to be hot. So I'm gonna, so I'm gonna go I'm gonna be the less not lewd person. I'm gonna go on set with my, the flattest butt possible and like fuck those nerds. Uh, it does sound it does sound sexist, but it's it's a it's about content. It's about your content and being truthful to the characters, and it feels like you're not being truthful to the characters with Captain Marvel. But then, like, Captain her Marvel, argument would be that, like, it's sexist writing, that they always loot the women, but, like, they loot the men a lot, too. Like, it, like you ever read a comic book? Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> like, what are you, you talking about? You've seen Chris Hemsworth in anything? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's okay to do it, but you know what I'm saying? Uh, black, black, uh, oh, Miss, 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 uh, Honestly, uh, Scarlett my, Johansson, like, she started out God. Black Widow, and dude, we all love those. That's what I was gonna say, things. like, like, my, the, the first time I was, Your like, sexual eight, awakening? No, 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 <laughs> that was probably Black Cat when I was, like, six uh, in the yes, original, yes. like, Spider-Man Power series. Ranger? No, 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 <laughs> Black Cat black in yes. Spider-Man, like, the, the, the Warner Brothers yes, cartoon yes, TV yes, show. Yes, yes, But, like, she's the, doing half splits, the first like, time I, around. dog. In front of the Spider-Man. The, the only time Bro. I gave a shit about an actress, like, in real life, was the first time Scarlett Johansson, Johansson was Black Widow. I was like, holy hey, shit. Like, what do you... Hey, people yeah. look like this? This yeah. is insane. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, but again, Marvel movies are not there to break your brain. They're not there to do anything. They're there to sell toys. They sell, t- sell toys and give... They're, they're just there to break box office records just without even trying. Yeah, just, and give, just by having the name, they can break a box, off, yeah. a box office record. And, and give uh, uh, aging nerds, like, a little bit of, like, what they deserve as far as, like, the economy. You know? Yeah. Well, I think that's a lot of why nerds hated Miss Marvel, too. Because she's not an established character. She's only, even in the comic book, it's only, like, within the past ten years kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So like it's not like disrespecting Captain Marvel. It's just they they just no, no, past thirty years for sure. Really that whole absolutely. But like it like nerds just can't stand like this uh, woke writing. Like what does that mean? What does that mean? Like unless it's just about a white dude, then it's woke writing, and that's like the most infuriating thing. Like yeah. that 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 doesn't portray to me. That doesn't portray to all of us. If you hear it in either of our speech patterns, but that's not how what I identify with. Yeah, dude, like being uh, this whole term of being woke is like, bro, it's like you're mad. You can't talk about something else, right? That you can't directly relate to something. Yeah, correct. It's not a white guy. I can't correct. relate to it directly. You know, and I don't know. Ah, it's just it's fucking stupid. It's it's like you even get like those Reddit forums where it's like people being like. Why is everyone white in anime? It's like they're not white in anime. They are Japanese. they are Japanese and are drawn yeah. to be like culturally ambiguous so that the that people watching can see themselves in the character. If you think everyone is white, that's because you yeah. just think everyone should be white. Mm-hmm. So fucking Marvel movies again. Jesus, my bad. So yell at me. So Marvel movies are fucking. Uh, no, they're 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 good. Yeah, you uh, all your fucking Twitter people being like the CGI, the whole being nerf. Fuck you. Watch the movie. 
it's not for you anymore. You're going out of it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that's true. It, it's not for you anymore. It's for you know, your kids. I'm, I'm comfortable. You're comfortable? I'm hey. so comfortable. Anyways, but yeah. In the score. The, these nerds are mad. Mm-hmm. These nerds are mad. But listen, I can't wait to be a mad nerd. We're talking about prey. We were talking about prey, but I wanted to talk about House of the Dragon. You are, we talk, still, are we still talking about prey? Yeah, we went into the <sighs> mess, uh, the whole sexist feel on the. On okay, the, well, what was your take on prey? Let me hear. Well, I thought it was really good. Uh, the only gripe, like I said, it was the whole like language thing. Is like if you really wanted to go the whole way and represent like Native Americans. Why not just have it subtitled? My thing is, I feel like I just got... For me and Karen, it just took us too long to get into it. Because if it's going to be a slasher sci-fi movie, which it's great. Like, that, that once it hits that point, like, it's a 10 out of 10. But it takes too long to get to that point, And that's what makes it so it takes, it takes It takes 35 minutes. That takes too long. That's too long. That's that's a third of the movie. That is too long as far as mm. as much as I'm concerned. I feel like for the establishment of our our main character, the 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 female uh, hunter gatherer person that she wants to, you know, excel at hunting. Right. And the fact that they put the brother in there, the fact that they put a a war chief in there and stuff like that, it just makes sense to me of what they wanted to do. Because a lot of the gripe again from the same nerds being like, Are you are you telling me that Arnold Schwarzenegger with all these weapons could barely kill him and you have this female Which is like a bow made him yeah and I'm like, Motherfucker, can you stop? Yeah. You know? It it's just because like you're right. Like you're right, but like it it's like the most recent um scream movie for me. Like they, I didn't watch that. The most recent Scream is very meta in the sense that they make fun of the old Scream movies. Mm. They make fun of the jump scares. They make fun of like how there, it was character fakes on who Scream would be to the point that it's just kind of like, why does it matter? Like, you're, you're in it for the fun, right? Like, that's why you watch a movie like this. And that's how I wish Prey had been, where it's just like, dude, I just want to watch a, a slasher uh, sci-fi movie. Just show that to me. Like, stop trying to make all this bullshit about, like, like history in, in uh, like, that's, it's maybe a bad take. It's maybe an unpopular take, but, like, it takes too long to get into the actual nit and gritty of the movie to the point that, like, I'd almost, like, forgotten why I'm watching the damn thing. It felt like a show. Because, like... I get you. It reminded me a little bit of Fate Zero. Because Fate Zero is notoriously confusing as fuck, which, like, I almost feel bad for you going into this week. Because it's not based off of a manga, it's not based off of a light novel, it's not based off of another anime, it's based off of a gotcha game mobile series. Like, it's, a, it's based off of a mobile video game, which is, like, very, very loose It's gotcha narrative. on a gotcha? Huh? It's gotcha on a gotcha? Kind of. Mm. Like, it, it's, like... The gimmick between a gotcha video game is that, like, it gives you a randomized chest, a randomized uh, a pull system that you hope you can get a certain character, right? Mm-hmm. It's like in Apex where it's like, I'm going to... FIFA, gonna... man. It reminds me of, like, Apex or, like, Fortnite oh, a little okay. bit where it's just like, oh, I want to get this one character, this one skin. I need to keep dumping money into these randomized chests, these randomized, like, like systems that, like, mm-hmm. I'm hoping that, like, I'll get what I want. And that's what the Fate series was for, like, forever. So, like, a lot of the the early series is, like, just trying to create a narrative out of nothing. Like, it is the, about the Holy Grail War. It's about, like, uh, um, um, bringing back to life old dead warriors. So you, you have uh, Gilgamesh. You have King Arthur. You have... Uh, 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 Alexander the Great. You have, like, all these mainstay, like, historical figures, and they're just going to fight each other. They're just going to do magic battles against each other, and that's what's going to be so cool about it. But, like, it takes itself so seriously in the beginning. It's, like, one of those, like, dude, like, I promise. I promise once you get halfway through season one, it's going to blow your fucking mind. But, like, it's hard to promise somebody, watch a fourth of this thing, and it will get good. I, I swear. And, and that's what's, like, infuriating because, like, 
a lot of like the Marvel series again are treated like that, where it's just like, dude, episode one was not what I wanted it to be, so I'm just gonna shit on it nonstop till the end. The of Star time. Wars series, Star Wars series, exactly. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Even like comparing the prequels, the prequels now have like the sense of like nostalgia established. Yeah, like about it, like people mm-hmm. our age grew up with the. The, the, the prequel series more than the original series and now we're just like dude you, you s- stop trying to make fun of like Anakin like that even though like they were bad like they were pretty terrible that was my Star Wars but like to that same sense like old heads get so mad about episode 7 because episode 7 is too much like if you don't know what an old head is you might be an old Exactly. It, <laughs> it, it's it, like people get mad being like it's too much like a new hope. It reminds you too much of like what Star Wars used to be and now it's this different thing. It's just like that's what gives me like the warm fuzzies because episode seven, like feeling exactly a B to B transition in the modern setting of a new hope mm-hmm. is what makes me like it because, you know, I wasn't born in 1978. Like I'll never understand what it was like to watch a new hope for the first time. Mm-hmm. I was already growing up in this post, 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 like, Star Wars world where, like, it was heavily marketed and, like, they were revamping the narrative. I didn't know, I didn't really understand what Star Wars was growing up. Mm -hmm. It was just cool sci-fi movies that, like, I could ask my parents to go see. Like, I didn't give a shit about the plot. Mm -hmm. If anything, I was more tied to the narrative in, like, the Lord of the Rings movies. Lord of the Rings was good. But, and that's what sucks, because, like, these nerds never gave Episode Seven a chance. Mm -hmm. Because they wanted it to be something else. And then episode 8 came out. It was entirely produced and directed by somebody that only grew up with the original trilogy and didn't watch any of the prequels, didn't watch episode 7, didn't try to tie in the narrative. He was just like, I have this one chance to make my Star Wars movie from my childhood, so I'm going to try to make The Last Jedi. And it's just like such a, just a spit in the face to anybody that like has actually been keeping up with Star Wars. It's just like, dude, like, I get it. You grew up in the 70s. Like... That's not that Whoa, crazy. That's that's not that crazy of a thing. That like, and then again, the same nerds shedding on the fucking mass production of Marvel movies. Don't get me wrong; it is a mass production, but it's. I mean, you don't have to go watch it, motherfucker. Like, if you, you don't, don't want to go watch don't. it, you don't want to go watch it. If you don't want to listen to this episode, you don't have to listen to this episode. If the MCU could make all their money off of, like, hardcore comic book nerds, then they would only make movies towards hardcore comic book nerds. Absolutely. But, like, you are not the baseline demographic. Absolutely. Like, that's what they don't get. Absolutely. You are not the baseline demographic. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and just, like, Star Wars, like... It, it, it just becomes this, like with the with the. I, I love the miniseries, the miniseries in, in in Disney Plus. Like I love the Mandalorian. I love Boba Fett. I love uh, I love that they're coming out with us. Uh, so I love that they're coming out with uh, Kenobi. Kenobi was really good. You know, even though it's cheesy at times, I get it. It's not supposed to break your brain, but it's it's there for especially. Uh, it, Star Wars, even uh, after the the sequels, like it started feeling like Goku. It's like, please, I don't want to hear about the Skywalkers anymore. Yeah, I don't want to hear about the Skywalkers anymore. You are introducing me to this entire really well developed world, and you're not telling me anything else. Like, oh, what the fuck out of here? And I think that's why so many people get mad about Dragon Ball Super because like like you some people prefer Dragon Ball GT over Dragon Ball Super because it feels like this grungier uh, more like it just feels like it was uh, uh, like off the sleeve bro like it just felt like GT even though it's the dialogue in the in the in the in the plot it's pretty bad the the character designs and the and the people being met in the, in every episode like the different like sphere dragons no it, it like it, it, goes, it, it, it like dragon ball gt feels more like episode eight the last jedi to me mm. like it's like fanfic from somebody that grew up with the original dragon ball series so they were like if i was given the chance what dragon ball narrative would i make because captain captain phosma even though we didn't see anything of it yeah. of her she's got whole comic book volumes you about know what her. i'm saying like captain phosma is probably my favorite character of the sequel just because, just because, just because it's the Boba Fett effect. I get you, I get you. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I wish, it, it's only like my favorite character because I wish I could see her more in there. Right. You know? Okay. And I, I, and I wouldn't be surprised if Disney Plus comes up with a 
Captain Phasma series. That'd be tight. That'd be tight. I'd watch that. I'll watch that. But I, I guess the point I was trying to make is that, like, we might never get there. Because, mm-hmm. like, uh, so many nerds are so mad that, like, oh, you forced a woman character into Captain Phasma. And then you killed her, like, right away in, in episode two. She didn't really matter. Why did you try to interject femininity into into my Star Wars? Well, have you heard about these recent interviews? I believe it was in a Joe Rogan episode. Uh, Joe Rogan's talking to Jamie Foxx. Jamie Foxx produced and directed a movie, which it's um, it's along the lines of Thunder, uh, uh, Tropic Thunder. Mm-hmm. So in Tropic Thunder, you have. You have Robert Downey Jr. playing a white Australian actor who is doing a, a, a quote-unquote unforgivable act in acting, which is portraying somebody else's race in, you know, right. in, in a role. But Even that is, Disney still does that all the time. But it's but it's that's the goof that in within the movie they made fun of what Hollywood does yeah. all the time. Yeah, yeah. But then Jamie Foxx comes out here. He's like, "Oh, I have this movie. It's finished. It's with all my all my rich Hollywood friends, and and we we're doing a, Mex- a Mexican parody." But like, in the movie, like, it's just white people playing Mexican people. There's yeah. no there's no setup to it. It's just white people playing Mexican so people. So it, it it's like, uh, what's his name? The 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 white guy that was really popular in the late nineties, early two thousands that did. Um, uh, naked guy. No, uh... Who am I thinking of? You white have guy. It. You have uh, it. Yes, he's got white hair, just... Steve, dwarf. Steve, Steve... What What movie was that? What uh, movie am I thinking Cheaper about? Cheaper by the Dozen. Yes, what movie am I thinking about, though? The one where he's making fun of Mexicans. The... Uh, Three Amigos. Yes, the Three Amigos, the early 2000s rendition of that one. Whoever the fuck that white guy was. It's like that, right? Steve, just, Steve something. Fuck, uh, Three Amigos. Three just, just like, just like, really cheap, like, Mexican humor, but like... It's it's supposed to be funny because it's Steve funny. Martin. Yes, Steve Martin. Steve Martin. Exactly. That's who exactly is Steve Martin. About. Yes, 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 yes. But so it's like that kind of. Is yes. that what you're saying? Yes. So now, so now, fucking Jamie Fox is like, oh, I wish the I wish the internet wasn't so soft and wasn't so woke, so I can so I can show my movie. It's like, bro. Just keep it to yourself. You could have just hired Mexicans. That was fine. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been just keep it to fine. yourself. And don't get me wrong. I'm pretty sure it's hilarious. Do you know how many Mexican actors there are? It's, it's, it would have been fine, bro. I'm pretty sure it's hilarious, though. Like, I'm pretty sure seeing Robert Downey Jr., Ben Affleck, and shit like that being Mexicans, I'm sure it's hilarious. I don't like Ben Affleck. I don't like Ben Affleck either. But, you know, the accountant was good. Okay. Uh, the town was good. But, um... I don't know. You know what I was talking about with the boomers at work? About, like, all the times that, uh... Fuck, what's his name from The Revenant? Um, I feel so stupid. Leonardo? Yes. Leonardo DiCaprio is, like, the best actor of our generation. Probably. Or, he's, like, ten years older than us, right? But you get what I mean. The right? range. The range is... Right. Like, 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 like you, you go through his IMDB profile, and you're just like, dude... Every single one of these is a hit. He hasn't been put in the character that he has not delivered for. You know what I'm it, saying? Like, it's, he's it's always wild. delivered. Like, even Django Unchained, you're just like... <laughs> Shit, like, take uh, it back to what's eating Gilbert Grape. Oh, yeah, yeah. You the boomers I mean? at work were talking about stuff like this. I was like, I haven't even seen some of these. Yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. I've seen the Titanic, like, Shutter Island. He should have gotten an Oscar. But, like, every year that he was nominated for an Oscar, it was like, dude, there were, like, real hitters, yeah. like, in these categories at the time. Like... Like, it, it's okay if maybe Leonardo DiCaprio doesn't win to, like, um, what's-his-face performance of Dallas Buyers Club. Yeah. It, like, I, I get like, it. I get the, it. The like bu- The budget for the movie, the makeup budget, was, like... Dallas Buyers Club? $6,000. What's his name? Uh, Matthew McConaughey. Yes. Yes. And Thank you. Leto. Like, every time before The Revenant that Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio had been nominated for, like, a Best Actor Award, like you go through the rest of the categories, like oh, I don't, I don't, like like don't get me wrong, like he's very consistent. He's always he's, goes against hitters, though. He's always in top five actors. Like don't get me wrong. Oh, but it's just like sorry, Jonathan wanted to really be involved, but like every time he'd been in like 
this top five actor kind of argument is just like, dude, you might not actually be number one. <laughs> like, yeah. like, like, and that's weird to think about because, like, if you think best actors of our lifetime, it's like for sure, like Leo or like Brad Pitt or like you, you know, just like uh-huh. these big names, and they uh-huh. act with each other because uh-huh. it's cool to see that level of talent ba- bounce off of each other. Absolutely, yes. yes. But like, like something like Knives Out. Even, yes, yes. You know, a lot of hitters on that fucking because cast. it was what's his face from uh, Daniel James Craig. Ford. Daniel, Daniel Craig, uh, thank you. Uh, it, it had the guy that plays Captain America. What's his name? Uh, what, was that girl the Almas? Uh, it, it had all these. The, the girl that is the the actual nurse. Uh, yeah, they have a uh... like Captain America's in this bitch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I love movies like that. Like those movies never make a lot of money because it's such like a film buff kind of thing. It's just like, mm-hmm. dude, we have all your favorite actors in the same movie. Can and like movies don't do this as much anymore. Like remember yeah. the nineties or the early two no, thousands? Like and they tried. They tried with the theme of like the clue and like this murder yeah. investigation. Yeah, knives out. Executedly, immaculately, didn't make a lot of money. Immaculately, didn't make a lot. But of money. you liked the movie, I love, right? I love that. Don't Dude, get me wrong. oh man, like just the progression of the movie, the shot, the shot. Uh, uh, I'm really big on shot composition, or like giving Jeez. away the whole plot via shot composition. By shot composition is, yeah. is one of those like oh like like I like, wish I would have paid attention. Like yeah. like some people hate that because like oh I was spoiled. Blah, 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 blah. And it's just like dude, like you are being. It's like fan service. You are being rewarded mm. for paying attention. So that's what that's what ruined the final for Inception to me. Okay. You know, as soon as they introduced the 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 physical objects, objects and, and shit like yeah. that, I was like, oh, I know where this is gonna. It's gonna be an ambiguous ending. Like, Ooh, is he in the dream or is yeah. he not in the dream? Ooh. Yeah. And then when it came, I was like, ah, you don't get them, and I fucking knew it. But like, yes, yes. Well, it's it's not even like you fucking knew it. It's it's one of oh. those like they mm-hmm. left it purposely ambiguous, and that's like that dog. You're a fucking dickhead. Also, Shutter Island. Shutter Island. If you really paid attention. It ruined the ending for you no, at the absolutely. beginning. But see, that's what I mean. That's kind of like a reward for like correct. watching it like a second or third time. Correct, correct. It's like watching a, like Uncut Gems or something like yeah. that. And like Uncut Gems is kind of like, it's a tragic ending. It's a tragic story. But like, but if you've been paying attention, that's, it, oh, that's always how it's going to be. Yeah, but it's always peak narrative though. Like the plot, it's always peaking all the time. Yeah. Until yeah, yeah. the end. <laughs> well, that's what I love too. Like it's, it's weird that like we almost forget because of how like cookie cutter Hollywood has become that art, especially like films, can really like manipulate your feelings. So we talked about Buzz Lightyear. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. talked about Buzz Lightyear. Uh, I had not seen Buzz Lightyear. It made uh, less money because Republicans canceled it. Canceled that, it. Not, well, I don't think I don't think that's the entire truth of it. I mean, if you, you didn't like it, uh, no, I did like it. But what I'm saying, it released at the same time as Jurassic Park. It Jurassic released, Park was ass. No, it released at the same time of uh, Bob's Burgers and That's what's true. the other mo- was the other movie, the one that was going against uh, Jurassic Park, the another another uh, uh, Ghostbusters. Oh, okay, okay. And nobody watched Ghostbusters, uh, but they watched it more than. It, it's they just, it more than Buzz Lightyear. It's just crazy. And then to think it was about, a, it was on like, Father's Day weekend because movie goes are only gonna pick one movie. Yeah. It's one of those where it's like yeah. moviegoers are not probably going to go see three movies at, in, a in a weekend, weekend. Yeah. right? Like they're only going to go see one movie that weekend. Correct. And like if you're on Father's Day weekend, it's like we're going to go see. Bob First Burgers. of all, we're not going to the movies because it's Father's Day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Dad wants to stay home and drink Bud Lights. Like, yeah, and be, by, <laughs> and be by the grill outside by himself. Yeah. Uh, and and that's what I'm saying. So now that I've seen Buzz Lightyear, it came out in Disney Plus recently. I sat down and watched it. It's not that much of a Republican movie. I thought it was going to be a super... Really good. I, I think it's really good. I thought it was going to be such a, like, support the blue kind of movie for some no, reason. Not at all. It's because that's the thing. Like, I, I've called you out for this before. Like, maybe not explicitly, but you're such, like, a... Like, Twitter influences your opinion sometimes kind of person. What? Kind of. Not like, even. Like, I don't... I know you don't do it on purpose, and a lot of times you do try to pick apart like different aspects. But like, if you're not familiar with a project or you're not familiar with a work, you remember things based off of the meme that you've seen off of like Twitter, or Instagram, or something. So I had I had this conversation with V. I'm like, hold on, let me finish this up before like I finish like I finish talking shit. And I'm completely wrong. Yeah, you you completely destroy me apart. Yeah. Like I'm thinking of Game of Thrones. 
I'm thinking of like different well, works. Game, like, game of Thrones never had any influence to me as far as uh, but like, like when, when media. I bring, but when I bring up Game of Thrones, you will recite like memes from like Twitter or Reddit or something. Well, like because that. that's what I know about the show. That's what I'm saying. That's but, what I'm saying. But I know I know Game of Thrones is good, but I had I just haven't watched it because I'm I I'm honestly one of my least favorite settings or mm -hmm. world settings okay. is the medieval set. Really? Yes. Okay, this so, explains a lot. This actually explains a lot. So okay, I like okay. I like Star Wars more than Lord of the Rings. I also, but I do like Lord of the Rings a lot. Okay, I hear you. Know, you. you know I didn't know saying? this about you. Yeah. Okay, okay, I hear that. So okay, so I did watch the first season of of Game of Thrones when it came out, but just like the setting, the world setting. It, it doesn't speak to me a lot, especially and, season one having like that low budget scenario where it's uh, them like fighting with swords in the and street. And it was like, really good though, but and like really it's still kind it. of low budget sword yeah. fighting in the street. But kind of even stuff. though me watching just that season, it was really good to me. Like I really liked that season, but I just didn't keep going because that's just not my cup of tea. So you prefer like peak sci fi over I, pre peak fiction? You I, think? Correct. Okay. Correct. Correct. Okay. Okay. This explains correct. a lot because I correct. feel like I'm the opposite. Like, don't correct. get me wrong. I know, like. Like I, I preached on this podcast multiple times about like Star Wars, yeah, like steampunk, atom punk, cyberpunk. <laughs> this you is what, what me saying? and Karen were talking about after we released a YouTube video for our re most recent episode. We're like, there's different punks. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But but like I'm such like a like a medieval kind of person mm -hmm. over like medieval fantasy kind of person mm -hmm. over like modern sci-fi kind of thing. No, I like I like my sci-fi. I like my laser beams. I like my. This explains a lot. Yeah, this so, explains a lot. So when I talk about when I talked about Game of Thrones, I talked about like the context that I know it's good, but it has memes to it, and I spoke from those memes because I wasn't gonna take the time to watch it. Okay. Okay. I, okay. You know what I'm saying? I hear like, you. I hear you. I didn't watch Lord of the Rings as it was coming now. I later That's on insane. watched it. I later on watched it, and I really love the trilogy. I I love the 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 Baggins journey. You know what I'm saying? I I really like those movies, okay. but. My cup of tea is like lasers and explosions and 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 and, and robotics and spunky and and, and cyberpunky shit and right. and shit like so that. So like, uh, uh, what what am I thinking about? Um, so what were we just talking about right now with uh uh the you we were just talking about? It's because I was talking about Game of Thrones and you were like no, he, but before that. Uh, no, no, no. I, I started a new, I started a new uh, topic because I was talking about Game of Thrones and you weren't familiar with the topic. But that you, it's not that you hate the narrative. It's because mm -hmm. you are not like just no. But we're, to... but we were talking about something else because in comparison, I was saying that Game of Thrones. I know it's good. Right. I know I'm. I know I'm not like uh, I'm the I'm the one percent of people that haven't watched Game of Thrones. Blah blah blah. blah. Like you that. know what I'm saying? Like I'm. I not hate that... people that are like. Me not liking something popular is a personality trait. I'm not I that person. That. I hate that. But we were just talking about something else. I can't remember what it was. But like, I know for a fact that I do not like that. And it was something else. I can't remember what it was. The, the challenge I'm going to make to you is to watch The House of the Dragon, starting with episode one. It's a prequel. You don't need to know a whole lot. If you if you feel like you're lost, I can send you twelve minute YouTube videos. Like um. Karen, Karen was sick on Friday. And like she had, I honestly think she had food poisoning. Yeah, yeah like, she was saying, like she she was getting like fevers and chills like back and forth, which is like already a sign of infection. Mm -hmm. Like not just like that, like Correct. virus Correct. infection. That's Correct. like a real infection kind of thing. Correct. She was feeling terrible. Tried to take care of her through the night, but like um, my my point is, I was making her watch videos on the backstory to uh, the House of the Dragon show. Right, mm -hmm. because I've read the books. I've well, I listened to the audiobooks, so like I know the entirety of what the books pertain to, mm -hmm. and like, it, 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 and the big reason for that is because when I'm in the gym, I need like any form of sound, a stimulus. Any, yeah. so that's why I got into podcasts, which is why like when we started like this podcast series, I was so into it because I was, I felt like I knew what podcasts were about, or like what audio only series were about. So mm -hmm. like. I feel really strongly about what's about to happen in the House of Dragons, so I was making Karen watch all these YouTube videos, uh, and, and like I'm excited for her to experience it, but I also feel like I might have ruined it for her mm -hmm. because like the first time I watched the Game of Thrones show, which is based off 
the A Song of Ice and Fire like novels is that I didn't know what it was at the time because my habit when I was studying, studying as an undergrad was I would just watch anything in the background, literally anything, anything. I can't even, so when I'm describing anime I've seen and I don't even remember, it's because I probably watched it in the background while studying for some bullshit organic chemistry test mm -hmm. or, or biochemistry or some bullshit. But the thing about Game of Thrones is like, it's one of those bullshit series that I was playing in the background that actually turned into something mm -hmm. at some point. And, and like, when somebody I knew because I was uh, uh, bouncing at a bar, when like one of the other bouncers actually told me like, no, like I have all the books. This is an actual book series. And he showed me, I was like, I don't even understand the medium I've been watching. Like I, I thought I understood the bare minimum of what this was. It's, it, it's a fantasy series that uh, uh, re relies heavily on gore to switch up the narrative and no character is safe because of that that I didn't even realize what exactly I was watching. And that's why I think I like the Song of Ice and Fire series more than like more than the Lord of the Rings series. Mm -hmm. I just now remember what I was uh, comparing my my taste in medieval fiction comparing to, to space, punk, you know, like cyberpunk and stuff like that. Buzz Lightyear, we are talking about right. how you were like, you said, that I, t I, I, I took what Twitter had to say as far as, like, the Buzz Lightyear movie. Don't get me wrong. What I saw, it was a lot of people being outraged for this one stupid fucking scene that is has nothing to do with the fucking movie. It's like the She-Hulk scene we're talking about. Like, it's such uh -huh. a throwaway scene that you don't even remember it. And I can't believe that nerds are mad about it. But even without the, the Twitter context, I really did believe that... For some fucking reason, Disney was gonna be a, was gonna be really biased and being really pro Republicanish. Because it's about a cop, uh, you know, like really like support the blue thing. I really did think that the Buzz Lightyear movie was gonna be about like maybe a little bit of repressive sense to what the Buzz Lightyear corpse does. Yeah, you know, or the or the what is it called the. Uh, the, it's the space, ranger, space, the space ranger, space ranger core, space ranger core, core. I thought it was gonna be a little bit more about that, but no, man. Like, you sit down and you watch this movie, and it's about a guy losing. And we and I we we pre I pretty much brought up like this movie probably like four episodes now. Uh, the Green Mile. It's just about it's just about seeing like your friends you made along the way die. Yeah. You know, and it, and, it, and it's a really good story, and it, it's because like and, and, I, the, the narrative is kind of like like if you you can totally have friends and you can love your friends, but like there's those types of people that will like prioritize their career or like their job moves over anything else to the point that they forget that people are living their lives outside of that, and the thing about Bud Light, Buzz Lightyear is that he's so Bud Lightyear, but. <laughs> <laughs> buzzed lightly <laughs> is that he's so focused on what he's trying to do and what he's trying to accomplish that he's his best to redeem that, himself. That, that his best friends are both like creating new lives for themselves and dying in those new lives and he doesn't even understand who they were at this point and it reminds me of like people that I've been best friends with since high school and then like they come to visit and it's just like dude you have a fucking five year old you have somebody that's about to be six mm -hmm. and like you're doing you're, you're trying to lobby for um this high profile charter school and you're, you're worried you might not get in it, and like my only like take on that is like oh i recognize this from the spy family anime blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. like they're so it, it's what it like i feel like lightyear hits hard because it's more one of these like it's more for adults more than anything i can't even imagine like what uh, what kids would see in it because the thing about lightyear's whole arc is that like he goes 100, 200 years without realizing that everyone that he loved in his past life basically grew up and died. And he was a, because he was obsessed of, of, of like proving himself. Right. Like it was this very selfish way of thinking that he never developed these, these, these attachments that like a normal person would. Mm -hmm. So it's about him with nobody basically just learning what it means to be human almost. Mm. <laughs> and, and, and again, like a robocop. 
kind of star. Exactly, but then again, in a really stupid way, it reminds me of Mass Effect and like the Mass Effect series. Because uh, I beat the Mass Effect Legendary Edition, which I was really excited about about a year ago. That was about to come out. But uh, because when I stopped playing games like prolifically in about 2012 was when Mass Effect 3 came out. And it wasn't until about 2020 when, you know, the whole world shut down and I magically was able to get a PS5, like, disc edition that, like, I started paying attention to video games again. But the thing about the Legendary Edition was it revamped my favorite series from right before I quit quit playing video games. And so I beat Mass Effect 3 in the Legendary Edition on, like, Tuesday or Wednesday, and I felt sad all over again because it was kind of those, like this wasn't as good as Mass Effect 2 kind of things. Mm -hmm. And I've been wasting a whole year trying to get to this point because I didn't want to be let down. So then I started Mass Effect Andromeda last night on Saturday, right after the UFC fights finished. And the thing about Mass Effect Andromeda is it's again kind of like this whole, like, we are holding the name hostage kind of situations. Like, this has almost nothing to do with the original Mass Effect series, mm -hmm. but just because we know nerds are attached to this name and this series and this this genre of like sci-fi, Mad and Black too, right? That like we are we're just gonna string you along and just like pickpocket you for it. Mm -hmm. That like I almost feel like manipulated all over again. Like <laughs> EA hasn't produced any of these games for like eight years, but I still feel like EA is fucking me every which way. No, EA is being fucking everybody for a while. You know what I'm saying? Right. Especially the Mexicans buying FIFA games every year. God damn. It's not just Mexicans that buy FIFA games. And they, it's probably at least 60% on their buying. No. The, the, the European <laughs> like, Union's no, a big, no, a big buyer of video games. Yeah, but no. That's ridiculous. Dude. It's ridiculous. Uh, it sucks when you have uh, good loving fucking games that, are, that, that dwell in your heart. And just come out and, you know, like the Call of Duty. Call of Duty has been shitting on our faces for, what, the past five, six years? Longer, like a decade. Probably? You think? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Definitely a decade. Uh, I, I did recently beat Mario Sunshine. Okay, how did that make you feel? Because I remember, so you, you didn't finish as in you got all of the stars, but you beat the main storyline. But you only need, like, well, what, 60 many, or so how many, stars? How many stars does it have? It's so like 120 or something like okay, that. Okay, no, I definitely don't have I, have. I have 90. But you beat uh, Bowser and Bowser Jr. in the bathtub. Yes. yes right? Yes, yes, yes. So Easy. Right. Easy peasy. Easy as fuck. But, like, I'm glad you did that because, like, oh God, I don't even know what to spend my time on in terms of games because I beat the Mass Effect series, like I was explaining. And, like, I kind of have been playing Mass Effect Andromeda, which, like, again, it just feels like a generic electronic arts game like it's yeah. just generic sci-fi like jetpack blasting people kind of game yeah. and that was never what bioware games were that's not what the dragon age series was that's not what the mass effect series was it was narrative Did they make by uh, bioshock too no no, no. Oh, i, I, I don't know different. who bioshock was but like mm -hmm. the thing about um bioware before they were bought by electronic arts is they were very narrative focused like RPG shooter kind of games, right? And, and exactly after EA bought them, they turned into just ways to like sell online traffic, to way to sell online subscription services. To be like, do you want to play Mass Effect online? Like, which well, like nobody wants to play Mass Effect online. Well, well it just feels it's just so it feels like this like super like stabby in the back kind of motion of like these companies. I don't know if you heard about like the recent like uh, uh, student debt pardon from Biden for the IT tech institutions. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 So like this this fucking uh, uh, what do you call them? There's uh, bank accounts, the the Wall Street accounts. What what do you call them? There's a uh, a trust or, or trust funds? No, not trust funds. Uh, there's a uh, with a whole what what do you call the other accounts? I don't know. So. When the when the market when the housing market crashes, so instead of instead of banks tricking poor people into buying houses they couldn't afford, uh, with IT Tech came this uh, hedge fund hedge fund. Okay. This hedge fund based college institution, who was 
giving out every degree possible in in in, in the degree dial, uh, catalog. You know, like they will tell you, like, oh yeah, we have we have a a, a, a video game designer uh, um, degree plan. Degree there. plan, but it, it was just like about the story of Mario Bros. So it didn't teach you any coding. It didn't teach you any of that. They they pump the shell of like of, of marketing advertisements on TV like oh if you go to our school you'll be you'll be the manager uh, uh, you know like yeah. some some company and stuff like that right. so the recent Biden administration just pardoned four billion dollars on just IT tech uh, uh, college college uh, debt. I get what you mean. Like, it's weird that ITT Tech just gets away with that, but like, $4 billion isn't even that much. No, it's not even that much. But like, what I'm saying is that it just feels horrible that these gaming companies don't have the same, like, standards to hold as far as like, debt, like, money collection. Like, right. Like, it, it is illegal to inflate prices by yourself. You know, right. you can't just sell milk for $20 if you wanted to, you know? And EA, for some reason, I mean, EA was a respectable company at one point. Yeah. But it just started microtransactioning, like the entire, like, uh, what is it, the, the win, uh, buy to win kind of? Yeah, like a DLC kind of buy to win, like mentality. Yeah, it's like Aldo just wanted to watch, like, popular anime throughout the month. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Which, like, e e even if I want to watch a shit anime, like, I, I, don't I wouldn't let you. Exactly, yeah. exactly. It's exactly something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's all here. But, uh, <laughs> we were relating this to Buzz Lightyear, like the Lightyear movie, and like I watched it on Disney Plus recently too, and like I didn't even realize like the scene where all the Republicans were mad about two women kissing, that like two women could form a whole multi generation they, family together, and they cut it from Disney Plus. Did you notice that? Did they? Yeah. I, maybe that, that's why I didn't notice. Like that, it, that it's, scene is not in Disney Plus. It's weird that people give a shit. It's so weird that somebody would give a shit about something that minuscule. Because, like, even if it was cut, the scene where it would happen is, like, what, four seconds long, five mm -hmm. seconds long? Like, why does that matter to you? Like, that's such, like, a hater mentality that's just, like, dude, you sound like some weird-ass, like, non-committal virgin anyways. Like, why mm -hmm. are you so upset about, like, two cartoon characters kissing? Like... Uh, yes, and, and, and when we're talking about, like, my, my preference in, like, sci-fi tropes, like, I, I do appreciate a Western before a medieval fiction. I hate Western. Is I, it weird? I like, like that, that's why I don't want to play the, 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 the what's the video game series? The, uh, uh, Red Dead Redemption. I don't want to play Red Dead. I don't want, like, like, I understand, so, uh, I, I, especially, I love, like, role-playing games. Like so good. I, I would be totally down to play like a role playing game, like it is the best a multifaceted role playing game. But like, oh god, I do not game. like I do it not is. like those kinds of narratives. It is the best how you can uh, your your affinity to be good or evil, like like relates to how people treat you. Like, but see, world. that's what Mass Effect at least pretends to be. But and, Red Dead Redemption does it good, and I know I know Westerns is hard to get to. I like. You know, uh, for a handful of dollars, I like the good, bad, and the ugly. I okay. like, I like uh, playing as wooden movies. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. they're hairy and stuff like that. Ah, it's such a great game. It's such a great game. It's it's not. I don't even put it in everyone the same catalog play, as GTA because GTA is just everyone. Phony. Everyone says to play Red Dead Two. Red Dead Two is so good. Everyone says to play so Red Dead Two. Like it's hard. Like it's it's. It challenges you, oh, even in just in the story missions, it challenges you to be better, which is so good because some of these missions, bro, you can either do it as quiet as, poss as, quiet, as quiet as possible or not, but, like, you have, you have like, gun deterioration. You have bullets to, get, to, to waste. You have... But, but see, like, weapon deterioration was, like, my least favorite aspect of, like, uh... uh but the, to uh, this new... Of, uh, the Legend of Zelda. But like... the, to this new age... But see, the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild was like GTA. And that's why we liked it so much, because it was just so... 
open worldly and and weirdly like that. Although the the weapon deterioration sucked it. That shit was ass. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But in in Red Dead Redemption, the weapon deterioration is not like you. If you use your gun, you're gonna lose it. All you have to do is go back and repair it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like you're yeah. not gonna lose your guns. All they are gonna get shittier for like aim and and recoil and show like that. But all you have to do is go back to the gun store and they'll they'll fix it. You don't. It's like five cents. It's like try It's five cents to to fix your gun. You know. Right. And it, it is such a good game. It, it it is an immersive game as fuck. But see, I I do like games like that, which like it, it's like I'm scared because like I I feel like exactly after I finish like the Mass Effect Legendary Edition, that's why I jump into Mass Effect Andromeda because it's a series that I'm comfortable with, right? Mm. Like I'm even though Mass Effect Andromeda like notoriously is like the worst game in the in the Mass Effect series, like I am terrified of like feeling like I'm going to invest my time or my interest into a game and I'm not going to like it. I am so scared of that narrative like i have the the most recent like ps5 port of the most recent like star wars game the 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 god it, battlefront it, no not battlefront it has um the the main character design is that guy from um shameless from shameless yeah yeah what's his name that 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 game and i and like they just announced a sequel to that game and like so i that's a big reason why i bought it for the ps5 and like I, I almost don't want to play it because I I'm I don't want to feel worse about the Star Wars series if anything. And Fallen like, Order. Fallen Order. Yeah, Je- Jedi Fallen Order and yeah, Star Wars Jedi Fallen. And I have the Kingdom Hearts like full edition or whatever the fuck it's called, where like I was playing through one of the PSP games trying to get to to the point that I was comfortable playing Kingdom Hearts three, but at this point like if it takes that much time I might as well just start. A Kingdom Hearts 3 playthrough mm-hmm. because like Kingdom Hearts 4 like just got announced like four or five months ago and like all we have is a trailer and it might take two or three years but like if it's gonna take me that long to beat the game anyways I might as well just play Kingdom Hearts 3 yeah I feel you I feel you uh, uh, Red, Red, Red Dead Redemption it's I believe what what the creators in Rockstar wanted GTA to be all of them. But uh, see, a, I, a new I, GTA franchise, a new GTA 6, the only reason they've been keeping GTA 5 for the longest time is because it is cheaper to keep it that way because right now maybe they don't have the team or the, or the, 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 the uh, what is it called, the production value for it. Like, it, there, there's such a loss that if they were to improve the game, as far as graphics and as far as world building, I feel like that's that's a loss compared to what the new people are going to be playing. So they rather update GTA V for 20 years than just make a new game. Right. It, but, it, it's kind of the issue with, like, uh, with the, fuck, the, whatever the company is that's making the Elder Scrolls series or the, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. the, 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 Elder Ring. No, no, no. It's the same series that makes Fallout. Um, what, whoever the fuck that is, like, they would rather reboot the Elder Scrolls Online series for the end of time as opposed to just making a new Elder Scrolls series, as opposed to making a new Fallout series. Yeah. Because, like, it, it saves them in production value, it saves them in money, like, all that stuff. And 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 this, this connects to the same point that I was trying to say earlier about the CGI movies coming out. It's like, bro... The research and the and the and the quality of it is not going to change much, even if you wanted to. Like, like it, from a GTA, from a G, from a GTA Five, as it stands right now, with all their updates, with all their online updates, and all their new shit and everything you can do in it. If they were to make a new one, there wouldn't be so much of a difference. What do you want? You want to look at your individual shoelaces? You want to look at individual like stubble on your on your chin, like there's nothing going to be more to change. Like, the joke about GTA V when it came out was just like, oh, I can, uh, like, you're role-playing. You, you could role-play so hard as just an average character. It's just like, like, like it's it's a new day. I'm going to shower. I'm going to shave. This, this, and that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drink in my apartment. Right. Like, that That was the, the biggest thing about the newest GTA series, but it got so boring 
so quick. Uh-huh. And, and and I think that's what's what Rockstar's been dealing with is just like the fallout of like making the perfect role playing series well, and just like everybody immediately getting bored with it. Uh, even like if GTA Four had I pretty I'm I'm sure it had the biggest uh, leap of of evolution as far as CGI because GTA Four uh, following Nico, our Middle Eastern protagonist, what's the Russian? Or Russian, was it? Which one? The one in New York? Nico. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was Russian. He was Russian? Oh, okay, okay. He was Russian. Um, they they animated real-time li- real rear-view mirrors. Which, if you don't know, re- mirrors in, in, in games alone is the most data-taking and, 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 and so hard to, 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 to design. Right, because it doesn't work like a mirror. It's, you literally have to make another room to make the reflection on the mirror. So right. if you if you notice in a lot of old school games, when you come to a mirror, it's foggy and it doesn't let you see the reflection because they don't have to work on that. Right. But like in GTA Four, the biggest leap in CGI, besides using your phone and using like amazing car almost Gran Turismo like st- uh, like stats to your cars like they all ha- had like real time working rear view mirrors right which is, which is impossible to animate it's right. impossible yeah, yeah, yeah. to animate you. I get you uh, yeah GTA Red Dead Redemption if you do want to play it if you get into but, those but see, that's what tickles I, I have the 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 Jedi one Fallen Order two and you, like I don't know if I should play that I don't know if I should play be playing Mass Effect Andromeda because my my favorite video game ever is Mass Effect two and the thing about Mass Effect two is like my favorite portion of it is not like the fighting it's not the gameplay which is a weird thing to say about a video game is that. It's it, it's the role playing of it is is the 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 quality missions. Mine's it's, middle gear. It, it, I which I get because like in Mass Effect Two, like the the big part is the loyalty missions. Being like you are going into everybody's dialogue, everybody's narrative, and being like, what does this character need right now to be loyal? By the time we go into a suicide mission, because if they are not loyal and they don't listen to me, by the time we get into a suicide mission, they're dead. Like that's it. So if I want a 100% complete playthrough where all my party lives, I need to be able to pull everybody out of the suicide mission. So I am going to do all of the loyalty missions so that they listen to me by the time we get there. And there's not a whole lot of games are like that because even by Mass Effect 3, there's no loyalty missions. You're just kind of running through the motions being like, the whole galaxy is about to die and you are the only person that knows how to solve this problem. So everyone just goes along with whatever Commander Shepard says. In Mass Effect 2, you're working from the outside in. It's like you are working for a rogue uh, uh, terrorist group, so who are you to tell an Alliance military officer what the fuck is going on right now? Mm -hmm. And that's why I miss the the allure of Mass Effect 2 so much, because like, even we've been getting a lot of trailers and a lot of leaks for the most recent Pokemon games, right? And it's so much of the same, which, like, I'm excited for. Like, I will pre-order it. I will make sure I get it at GameStop, like, the day before it origi- it officially comes out so that I can call out the day before. But, like, compared to the Pokemon Legends of Arceus series, like, it, it, it it's less of the role-playing and more of the status quo Pokemon series. Like, it's more of, like, you're going to get the gym badges at this time, at this moment, and your Pokemon are going to be this level at this time, and you're going to be introduced to these Pokemon. And, it, it, and like, there's no role-playing to Pokemon anymore, and that's what makes me so upset about the game series. It's more, and this is a good, like, segue, not even segue, but a good connection to what we were just talking about, the Digimon and the Tamagotchi. Like, what? Uh, 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 Animal Crossing is such a Tamagotchi play. Yeah, you know absolutely. what I'm saying, and absolutely. even even not not just the, the the new Pokemon that is gonna come out, but now because of this games want to be so like scheduled time, yeah, like it just feels like a Tamagotchi. It's like bro, it's like I don't have time to 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 log in like at five p.m. in the morning just to do this shit. Yeah, you know, five p.m. in the morning. Uh huh. Five p.m. in the morning. Yeah, five p.m. in the afternoon, <laughs> and 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 just being like. 
And it, you know, just being so restrict, restrictive about the whole thing. No, I agree. I do want to buy the most re recent like Digimon series mm -hmm. games because like I am interested in learning the new narrative because like. I did feel so strongly about like season three. I felt so strongly about the season of Digimon where like the actual kids turned into the Digimon and that was like I remember that being way later in time for me, which like in, in times of production time for Digimon was only like four or five years later, but by the time I was like sixteen, seventeen, I remember that like they were showing the Digimon series with the actual kids turned into Digimon. And I remember feeling like that's cool. Like that's how I would want to be if I was in a digital world. I don't want to be working vicariously through a Digimon. I want to be feeling like I'm, me, the actual person, is discovering, like, the armor, is discovering, is discovering the crest, is discovering the inner Digimon spirit that's going to turn me into the Digimon that, like, I'm going to be fighting everybody with. Because a lot in Digimon Adventure is just kind of like, oh, I'm in danger! Agumon, please do something! Please! And they do. Yeah, exactly. Like, I can't do anything on my own. Agumon, please save me. And, and like, that sucks. That kind of does suck. But, like, again, that's, like, a lot of what we were dealing with in the 90s and the early 2000s. Uh, yeah, so we are subsidizing anything pre-2008. Uh, if it's not, like, a super hitter that we haven't covered, I don't feel... I, I feel like we... I feel like we've covered pretty much every hitter, like, pre-2008. Um, like, as far as, like, Ghibli Studios, as far as, you know... You're, uh, you're right. We've seen every, intensity. like, every pre-Ponyo yeah. Ghibli, yeah. like, movie. Uh, we, we... But again, we still haven't seen Naruto, which, like, yeah. kind of, depending on when you judge it, came out in either 98, 99, or 2000, whatever... Uh, a lot of people get mad, about, mad at us for not watching more of the original Bleach series. Uh, we haven't watched, like, the original Pokemon series at all, which, like... But we will. I'm surprised we don't get more shit about, to be honest. I don't know. I feel like once you invite nerds to talk and to express themselves, they're scared. Yeah, they shut down. Yeah. They shut down a lot. Because yeah. it's like, especially us, like... Even something we'd like, we'll talk shit to it into the ground. Because we're an anomaly. We we are very cool guys. We're very hygienic, good smelling nerds. Otaku's. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay. I'm, I'm listening. I'm listening. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I I just feel like it intimidates some of these like low tier nerds that are smelly and they just have like the one take of the one anime that they watch. And this is just between us. This is like what between us is. No, I hear you completely. But like, we have girlfriends. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, which is anomaly. But like, like, we are woke. Quote unquote. It's because what does that even mean? We're progressive, bro. We we don't give a shit about your. God, oh God. I don't know. It, it's because some people will be like, oh, I can't watch X, Y, and Z because it it it's it, still it, woke. It's too woke, which just means it has like gay characters. And, and like we're we're not like like that, you know what I mean? Because like we can watch two male characters kiss and not feel a thing. No, absolutely. <laughs> it, it, but like we do have guests, so like I do want to bring back on that like aren't woke or anything like that, but like aren't the most traditional viewpoints that we've ever had before. Because like even thinking about uh, the episodes that Jacob and Wallace were on, where it was just like <laughs> they were always about. Um, a lo a, a lolly uh, uh, love love interest. Always, it's just always about a lolly love interest, and like the main character being like, "Oh, but she's a lolly. Oh, but she's actually an immeasurable robot who's actually hundreds of years old, so I shouldn't yeah. feel weird about it." Oh, but she is a lolly, and yeah. just like, uh, like I'm not I'm not saying we like excuse that, but at the same time, that's like not cancelable like, that's, like, that's part of the conversation yeah. thank you that's like very much like and again it just all falls down into like different different sections of the community of the fandom like all throughout anime anime is such like a widespread spectrum of like different tastes and tropes and and comedy or or seriousness that like, there's some anime that's, like, completely, like, co comedy-based in certain aspects, but then, like, in certain lenses, just, like, dude, like, you should not say that. Like, you should 
a hundred percent not be animated. Again, right? again, in context to like this un un uh, released like Jamie Foxx movie, it's like, bro, it's like the only reason you're defending it is because it's bad. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. It, it, I'm sure it's funny as fuck, but it's. <sighs> And I don't want to go into this woke fucking tension, but like the but like the reason behind like pronouns is not the hard dude. Like if you are communicating with a if you were to change your pronouns from he and him to to she and they, because you are my friend and I deal with you every fucking day, like I will respect that of you and 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 keep it that. I do think it's weird when if you if you meet a stranger and. And they're like, hey, dude, uh, I'm actually not a he, I'm a she, but you call them a he, and he's just a stranger, then just be like, oh, my bad, and you will never see him again. I, I do think it's really weird when people, like, take it personally. Like, it, this takes something out of me to describe them how, how they see fit. Yeah. Like, that's super, super weird and self-serving. Like, like, this is, like, some mama boy kind of shit that, like, your first impression of somebody is, is just how they deserve to be spoken to. Like By that, you. That's weird yeah. to me. That's such like a self-serving, self-aggrandizing kind of point of view that I don't have. I don't understand how other people have that point of view. Where it's just like, it, it, it takes so much out of my day to call somebody that I see as he and him, to call to call them she and her that I'm so upset about it like dude what are you talking especially, about especially especially if it's somebody that you deal with every day we're all grown up so you, you don't have to deal with random strangers your co-workers fuck your co-workers you know you, you don't even have to deal with them but if your co-worker tells you like hey bro like I'm not a he or I'm not a she I'm a I'm a, I'm a her or a him like just for the sake to not have a bad day just be like Right. There's some people for the sake of being controversial that will just like miss the pronoun whole them for the sake of it. Yeah. Just 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 for the fuck of it. Like yeah. just like it dog I know for a fact it doesn't take anything out of your effort, out of your day to like just correctly pronoun something. And it's and it's fucking weird that I, I don't wanna say most of Americans, but most of ignorant people, which is most of America, uh, that like, oh, this is taken away. No, bro, this is this is broadening our horizons as far as, like, a community. Uh, some of the most homophobic or transphobic language I hear is out of, like, the Tucker Carlson's of the world or, like, the, uh, what, what's that? Ben Shapiro. The Ben Shapiro's of the world. Or, that, or that, the like, Andrew that, 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 Taint. Right. That are convinced that, like, being trans is a form of mental illness, which, like... The, the, like, this literally doesn't even make sense to me. Because, like, for all of recorded history, there have been trans people. There have been gay people for all of recorded history. Castrados, people that were, you know. That's right exactly what I'm saying. And, like, but you being, like, but I grew up as a white Christian dude. And, like, I'm convinced that there's no gay or trans people or else it's a mental disorder. And that's how they categorize it. Because it's just, like, I am so smart and so much better than you that, like, if you are trans or gay, then you are suffering from men mental disorder kind of thing. Uh -huh. That, like, that's so transphobic. And, 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 and that's a mental disorder on its own. Right. Like, you're you, not... like, dude, how are you mad that somebody else is trans? Are you fucking them? What do you give a shit? Like, what? Like, literally, I could not care what anybody else categorizes themselves as. Because even if it doesn't, like... It doesn't take anything out of my day. If Aldo came out tomorrow and being like, dude, I categorize as she, her, it takes nothing out of my day to be like, yeah, she, Aldo. Uh, yeah, quotes Aldo Mendez, blah, 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 blah. It takes nothing yeah. out of my day to, like, know. categorize him correctly. It really doesn't. Not, and, and there's some people that take up a little bit of time just to get used yeah, to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, just to get used to it. Yeah. But that's like perfectly reasonable. You know <laughs> what I mean? Yeah. But I'm take, sorry. I'm sorry. I called you he. I'm sorry. It's. She. I know it's she. I know. Yeah, it. I'm my, bad. my bad. I'm my bad. I, I, I do that with Karapika all the time. <laughs> you do that. With her. And Karapika is like Karapika is not it's even like that the female voice just gets in my head, and I always call her a she. I can't wait for you to finally one day listen to the Goku Dragon Ball no, no, like dub. Uh, no, I I heard. Dub no, push. yeah, it's a woman. Like, Even it's in, super nasally and terrible, yeah. and like, and that's the point, right? 
<coughs> like, I can't remember being so self-centered that I'm just like, ugh, ugh, calling Aldo a she is so detrimental to my life. Oh, like, ugh, ugh, I don't know like, if I can get past to these seven hours of recording. You couldn't, like, <laughs> you could never pay me to care that much. Yeah, absolutely. So I can't even imagine how, like, talking heads on Fox know. News care that much. Yeah. It's, I don't even know. Well, they get paid millions of dollars. Right. So I guess it takes millions to give a shit about pronouns yeah. that much. Yeah. Uh, so our our season finale is approaching, and by approaching, I mean in the next fourteen episodes. But uh, I'm I'm excited. I'm excited. The the podcast. I, I feel like as soon as we started, like we you do know, thirty episodes. Each. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like I feel like we've been more uh, 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 enticed to change the 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 the, the route that. The, the podcast is going through as soon as we start doing the videos mm-hmm. you know we we are looking at our body language we are sitting opposite to what we were all op- sitting at the beginning of the podcast right you know? right big change um but uh, i don't know i just i just like the way the podcast is going i like it's it's effortless uh you know still to just come here and talk to you about anime which I'm glad because, like you, like I feel like my least favorite podcasts or like mediums about like just discussing anime in general, as opposed to like video essays, is just like when it gets too pretentious. It gets so like, oh, y'all wouldn't understand this, but like the Fate series is goaded for X, Y, and Z reason. Like you're not, you're 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 not giving context to anything. You're just talking down to your audience. Yeah. Yeah, it's like like the whole uh, like a lot of bad comedians will be like, "Oh, you you guys don't get that joke yet," because because like you're woke or something like that. This, yeah, like, this happened the, to yeah. one of the times me and Karen went to LA. There was just like this female uh, comedian that was just missing, like just bad, like uh-huh. just, and she just, was giving the excuse of that that the audience wasn't developed enough to get she, a joke. Yeah, yeah, she was just like, yeah. who in the audience is woke? That's why you guys aren't getting this. Blah, blah, blah. I'm just uh-huh. like, dude, you're not funny. Like, yeah. everyone around your act is so much funnier, but you are not because, like, you don't want to develop your craft because you're convinced if nobody likes you, it's just because you're you're just a victim of wokeism. Wow. Like, and I feel like I've known multiple people like that. Like, they don't even know. People. People. Like, uh-huh. people like that. is uh-huh. They don't understand what they mean about, like, cancel culture in general. It's just, like, they're just like, oh, you're so about cancel culture. Oh, you're not about, like, creative discourse. It's just like, no, like, I don't want overly sexist, homophobic, or just, like, racist behavior just out in the open for no or fucking misrepresenting, reason. Or misrepresenting. Right. And, yeah. the, and then, like, certain people, like, these same people will be like, you, you you need to have a certain modicum of respect for, like, women or trans or gay people. And just, like, that's fine. I agree with that completely. But you're agreeing with, air quotes, cancel culture then. Like, you're agreeing that if you say something problematic, that you shouldn't just be able to get away with it, right? Correct. Correct. And you know what? I hate, because I have a couple of people that I follow on Twitter that are this, are this, is never too good kind of thing. So, when Rowan Wade got overturned, um, uh, I, I'm not going to throw names, but like a couple of my followers, before that, they were like, you know, support, support, support the, the clinic, support this, support that. Okay, so once it gets overturned, a lot of people who are not very... Uh, 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 fluent in the in the in the in the conversation, they're not they don't know a lot about the conversation. Their first their first reaction, if you're a good person, you're gonna you're gonna donate to Planned Parenthood. Yeah, the same people who were just right before the overturning were like, please help the cause, please help the cause. Now they're like, don't donate to Planned Parenthood. There are a bunch of scammers, blah, blah, blah. Donate to this, to that. Why are people doing this? It's like, motherfucker, they're trying their best, bro. Like, it's... Well, well that's why they say a big reason for the the, the ballot write-in for the, the Kansas uh-huh. uh, ballot measure, which is whether or not to change the state constitution to make 
uh, 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 abortions, either legal or illegal, was that um, the the idea of government autonomy, autonomy, no, autonomy, autonomy. autonomy thank you, w was because like the the people that were pro Roe v Wade, anti like the overturning of Roe v Wade, mm -hmm. was just like, dude, who the fuck is the government to tell you what you can and cannot do with your body? Mm. It, and like, Especially. I feel like that's a really big narrative that sits well with a lot of people. It's just like, dude, like, a lot of people are really comfortable with an expanded police state, an expanded military budget, an expanded like a, 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 a defunded welfare state. But like, are really anti like, dude, the government telling telling me what to do mm. is like the worst thing possible, like mm. in the world. And if when the ballot measure was portrayed like that, like, dude, the government is telling you a woman what you can and cannot do with your body ever like it was like 70 to 30 or something like that like it, it wasn't even close like women are not comfortable with the federal government being like or even their state government telling them what they can and cannot do right. with their body yeah which like and like the people that are opposed they're not comfortable fucking with the, you know what I'm saying? You like, you you are not you're the cringiest fuck. You are not, has that. You are not fucking nearly enough if you have never had a pregnancy scare in your yeah. life. Exactly. Like you like literally are not fucking nearly enough if you never had a pregnancy scare. Like that is the most like asexual take I've ever heard in my life. Just being <laughs> like everyone's gonna sit in their rooms and not fuck each other and no. like just play video games and read manga all day. But they're but they're not gonna get like turned on by anything. They're yeah. just gonna sit there and just be. Asexual about everything. Put me, in a very... put me in a room with anything for six months. I'll fuck it. <laughs> like, I, like, I completely <laughs> believe that that's the case. Like, don't yeah. get me wrong. That's yeah. not yeah. what I'm saying. But, yeah. like, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, that's the exact point I'm trying to make. It's just like, All dude, right. you're such a Suppressed. fucking weirdo. You are <laughs> such a fucking... Like, lonely weirdo. <laughs> yeah, that you're just like, yeah, everyone's just sitting in their apartments not fucking like, each other. And that's yeah. exactly what life's supposed yeah, to be. Yeah, yeah. And and there shouldn't be no fucking and they follow my radius from me. Yeah, dude. It's the weirdest uh, fucking thing I've ever heard in my life. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And 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 not only that, like, just the fact of, oh, like, this goddamn Republican is just digging their own hole as far as the whole Trump thing and the whole Trump's investigation is like, dude, the fuck out of you, like it, it, it's like become a meme to everybody else that like Republicans don't see it because like Trump's whole presidential stand was that like their memes were the go-to political memes, right? It was just like, haha, we're pissing off the woke liberals, haha, I just triggered the liberals. But now it's become like, dude, like, they're the flakiest motherfuckers, right? Exactly. These are the flakiest, like most like whitewashed motherfuckers you've ever seen in your fucking life like the the back the blue people are all of a sudden being like the cops are corrupt they're 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 against our people blah 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 blah, blah. like where were you when like the george floyd thing was happening fucking crazy dude fucking crazy the other day i was thinking and this is pretty like off and, and off tangent but i was like this should be a bill that budgeting for the government you cannot receive a government budget extension a term in a row like if the military gets 800 billion dollars in one term the next year they cannot receive that like it should be like a a, 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 a cycling of budget like okay this year or this term we only contributed 40,000 to the educational system okay now let's change it to a 800 billion for from the military you know what i'm saying i hear you, you and know? like i feel like i was thinking something similar on my own time like completely on my own time i was going through publicly available data publicly available data from the el paso um oh, i can't even remember who it is but like basically online you can see all the 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 fundraising reports from the all of the city all the city council candidates and so on my own time, I was going through like the biggest donors in El Paso and it's, it's El Paso billionaires. Like it's Woody Hunt, it's Paul Foster, it's Joe of Joe Concrete. In, in like Next episode, credit card information. <laughs> but like yeah, residential addresses. My thing is like these same city council presidents will pretend to be so 
like like grounded grounded <laughs> and like they, they will pretend to have this anonymity away from like the politics of El Paso and it's just like dude I know that the hunts gave you ten thousand dollars like what, what are you talking about like yeah. that's not this is publicly available information you're trying to pretend to me that you're not available to El Paso billionaires or somebody that pretends to be very much about um, the 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 unused land commission or wants to be about open land and non-developed land kind of things is being funded by like homeowners associations or like building associations or like the EPT land fund like I see where your money's coming yeah. from like what do you, what do you you're not really about this yeah. like they are paying for access to you and you are giving them said access like by fulfilling your your campaign promises to like pretend to care yeah to, to three people in the city exactly yeah. and, and like they they pretend that that's like a form of sustainability it's just like uh, the, the big thing about sustainability like is not it's just not environmental sustainability it's not just like undeveloped land leads to less to, to more rainfall capture more natural rainfall capture which it's, means that we'll get less flooding it, it, it it's also it's about like cost of living sustainability. Right. Thank you. Like like social equity is a big part of sustainability. So you were telling me that like if there's available unused land that we should not use it for stormwater capture efforts because you are so in love with the mindset of like uh, 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 mining uh, something. Yeah, of, of unused land being an asset. Like, that doesn't make sense to me. And that's as a sustainability professional. Like, that literally does not make sense to me. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's because, like, a, a lot of... God, a, a, lot, a lot of sustainability or a lot of conservation efforts in general have become, like, less about the actual science, but more about, like, the the, the political purview, the, the how people view you in terms of your conservation effort. Yeah. And that's... Wrong. That's so wrong, and, and like everyone's forgotten about that. And, and I feel like we had this conversation before, even like two years into this podcast, we talked about like, dog, like I know, I know, gas is like a, a regime. It's a fucking empire of of a, of of, of uh, an industry. Mm -hmm. It's like we're not asking you to give up your money. Can we just please change like gas to like electricity or? renewable like resources like solar energy like we don't care if you owe that money if you if you if you own that money like we just want you to change the climate of the earth that we're fucking like fucking up you know what i'm saying yeah and and the, and the same thing it's uh like like the water company the water company like in a lot of states like collecting rainwater is illegal but how much money would it save the industry or climate just so people can like collect rainwater. You You're know right. what I'm like, saying? Like a lot of it is just revenue. Like a yeah. lot of it is just saying that like, oh, you can't collect rainwater on your own because you don't know if it's contaminated, it hasn't been treated by us. Fuck blah, you. Blah, 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 blah. The FDA is a joke. <sighs> yes and no. Like like and a lot yes of it no. like yes like, no. like like I think it's really fucked up no. that like the we still feds, have theses on our meat, we still have uh, Well not just that, but like I was gonna talk about water rights in general. Uh -huh. The feds after the most recent uh dispute in the Colorado River Compact, like basically said that first rights matter the most, which means that California as the first established states it, when it comes to the the Colorado River Compact gets the most inalienable rights when it comes to water resources water resourcing from the colorado river like they're having to cut down on zero percent of their colorado river intake but arizona is cutting down like 30 percent mm -hmm. colorado itself is cutting down 20 percent new mexico is cutting down like 15 percent and, and it's not only that they have to do it because their electrical resourcing is also coming from that water flow mm -hmm. because if these lakes of these rivers if it, dams. It, if all these dams can actually use flowing river water, flowing lake water to generate electricity, then whole states are going black. Mm. But like the city of the the state of California, because of like this nineteen forties way of rationing, like water resourcing, the way it was written, they have to cut zero percent, 
And that's so crazy to me. Like, like you can just not even imagine. You can see why other people would be mad about that. No, absolutely. Absolutely. And we're lucky that we're not as bad as some other spots in, in, in just the continent alone. But like Flint, Michigan, you know, like having a terrible water situation, you know, potable water should be available to every everybody. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? I, like it, it's weird that it's treated as like a resource. There's like a, a revenue source for yeah, certain people. Yeah, it's like, oh, you want to get better water? You better move from your state. What do you mean, motherfucker? That whole county just shouldn't exist. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking wild. Fucking wild. But... Any anything else about Digimon? Do you want to go into the nerd down? We've been doing the nerd down for oh, like an hour oh, already. Oh, okay. You want to talk about Mario Sunshine? Do you uh, want to talk about Mario Sunshine? Well, I feel like I talked about it. I had you, fun playing it. You, you brought it up, and then but like, how does Mario Sunshine? Did you ever Phil play Galaxy? Me? Did you ever I, play? I started Galaxy. Mario Galaxy is my favorite Mario. But it's 3D game. but it's weird on the Switch because it doesn't have uh, uh, it I doesn't mean, have any of the the handheld motion. No, it does. It does, but I'm using it with like oh uh, an actual physical controller. Controller, so I need to use the you, the Joy Cons. Yeah, the Joy Cons. That is yeah. what's fucking you up. Yeah. Because don't get good. Don't get me wrong. When I played it on the Wii, like you you had the two separate shoot, controllers. You can shoot like the stars. Well, you're supposed to like when the gems sweep, are on screen, just like sweep, sweep, just yeah. sweep it and, and like. These, this is my favorite game. Like, mm. not only because, like, Rosalina is, like, my favorite, like, Mario I saw, Princess. I saw Rosalina, yeah. yeah. But, but, like, it, the, the thing about it is just, like, it was such a noticeable revamp in the Mario series. Because, like, Mario 3D games, like, uh, uh, Mario 64 was a hit, right? Mm. A lot of nerds were really mad about Super Mario Sunshine. Because they felt like, they were being babied through the 3D platforming aspect. It's just like, what do you mean I have a floating jet backpack? Like, that's, that, awesome. that's not, it's, it's, it's I think amazing. it's dope, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But, like, a lot of nerds were mad about that. Yeah. In the Super Mario Galaxy, it's just like, dude, we are micro platforming you on a 3D surface. Yeah. So, like, yes, you are platforming on a 3D surface, but, like, the gravity force field is lesser than you're on mini moons. It, it, like the whole point of the game is to be jumping between islands of on a 3D, uh, uh, of moons yeah, on a three D platform yeah. on a three D platform, which was like at the time in like twenty ten, which is really 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 big deal. Like mm -hmm. this was like a huge jump in three D platforming. But like even there's now it's just like oh it's so forced. Why can't I just play Mario sixty four forever? Like, mm. if nerds were in charge of video game production... That shit would have done. No time. games would have surpassed, past like, 1999, like, mechanics. Mm -hmm. Like, for real. Like, The Legend of Zelda would have been stuck in Majora's Mask. No, and that's what happens, and that's what happens to a lot of content. A lot of content wants to follow what their audience says. Just like My Hero Academia, they completely lost the leash on that. You know what I'm saying? With all these... And, and and I don't know and I don't know it firsthand, but you've told me that all these off plot tangent side stories about my hero academia has degraded the fucking plot to my hero academia. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And if we were gonna sit here and listen to your suggestions, this would be a less fun podcast. No, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Oh God, I, I I don't even know if there's anything else. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, this is Between Nerds. Uh, thank you for following us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at Between Nerds. Please email us at BetweenNerdsPodcast at gmail.com for any of your suggestions, comments. If you want to keep your 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 presence uh, 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 anonymous, just email us at that. If you want to keep your name anonymous, we will, we will read your... Your email anonymously, right? But you know, like, comment whatever you want. If you're not, if you're not strange to be anonymous or anything like that, just comment on YouTube, Twitter, or anything about your takes or how much you don't like us talking about your favorite anime because it hurts your feelings. Uh, yeah. That might be it. My name is Drew Philip. This is all the memes. We've been between nerdos. Nerds. <laughs>